Good evening, and it's part two of exposing Ms. Nzua K. Tankredi. We call him baby charlatan because he's a charlatan, but then a baby at the same time. 26 years of, of age, or is he 27 now? And somebody who has really destroyed a lot of livelihoods. And we're going to be discussing and excavating a lot today and looking at his operation. This is indeed part two of exposing Ms. Nzua K. Tang Kredi. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Solomon Zhang Shams. Welcome to Solomon's Temple. Please, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel as yet, please go straight to my YouTube channel, Solomon's mm. uh, Temple, and make sure you subscribe right now. Uh, there are other videos that you can also watch right there. And also, please tag people that you feel that need to watch this. Uh, there are quite a lot of people that need to watch this. So begin to tag people. Begin to share it. Begin to tag people. Uh, I have... Uh, Quite a lot of guests with me uh, to tonight in the studio. I just finished an interview with Anonymous who had a sexual relationship with uh, Nzua K. And that was just an extra. That wasn't part two. This is a real part two. And we're also bringing part three where we can bring victims. That is going to be exclusively victims. But tonight we're going to be looking at some of the leaders that we are part and parcel of this church, ministry, this cartel, this group. We're going to be asking them questions. They're going to be unveiling to us how he operates, because that is very important. Uh, that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to take the next hour and a half uh, to try to do that, and we see how it goes. And I have all the leaders with me already in the studio. Uh, give this not there. I have Subu, uh, who was uh, his best friend. You know, he was right from day one when, when the whole church, new life, ministry started. He was right there. Bongani was here last week, didn't get to say anything, but he's back here. And there is uh, Faro, of course, uh, who we all know. Last week, he was very passionate and the position that he took. And then we have uh, Kibotile. She was the head of uh, ushering protocol. That's it. And, and she is back with what us also. Ushering. ushering, yes. And then we have Gift who was also part of uh, the protocol. So, guys, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Solomon. Thank you, yeah. Solomon. So, let's start, uh, let's start from the beginning. Let's actually start with Subu. Subu, yeah. how long have you known uh, Nzuaike? You were his best friend. You were there when the whole church started. Did God really call him? No. Why? Look, someone, I, I, okay, when the guy started, um, I met him in 2013. Um, obviously, everything was moving okay. Uh, so there, there weren't any suspicions, none whatsoever. And um, so the church started in, in 2013. Everything was, was, was okay, right? So this was a guy that genuinely had a, you know, passion for young people coming together in the school and, you know, praying and stuff. I, I, would, I would say I started doubting his calling when he started, um, you know, when he met that guy who's in, who's in London, who says he's a prophet. I, I you were doubting. Yeah, 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 that one, that one. I started doubting him then because he started having so much pride and arrogance. You know, um, this is a guy that now was, you know, captured by money. You could see that these people, they are, they are preaching not to, con not to confront sin but they are promoting sin. And moreover, these are people that are concerned about preaching messages that are going to get people to take, to take money out from their pockets. So he started, a lot of stuff changed. And um, I was quiet all along, Solomon. Bear in mind, I, I saw everything. I was, I was extremely vigilant. I was extremely vigilant. I was always observant, but I never spoke. I was trying to protect. No, before you, before you, before you even jumped the gun, right? Let's go yeah. to what sort of relationship? When did you meet him? Because you knew him before he started this. How did you meet him? Yeah. What was the relationship that you had? I, I met him when we were still in VUT. This was in 2013. This was in January 2013. Um, so he was coming to register. I was, I, was a, I was a student the previous year. So he was coming um, in the next year, which was, was 2013, to come and register. And he, he, by coincidence, I believe, he came to the house where I was staying as a student. And that's when we met. And uh, genuinely, I, you know, I felt compelled. I, I have so much compassion for people. I, we started speaking from then. And obviously,
Mm. Seems like we lost uh, Sabu right there. Uh, so we're going to continue while he sorts himself out. Uh, Bongani, let's 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 come to you. Last week you didn't get the opportunity to say something, but uh, you were here with us. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. Sabu, are you back? Sabu. Can you hear me, Subu? Okay. I think there's a problem with your audio. Subu, we cannot hear you. But we can hear you, but I think you cannot hear us. Oh, yeah. There, there he goes. Uh, so, Bongani, last week you didn't get opportunity to say something. What was your experience there? Yes. Shoe Solomon, um, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be on the show. Uh, sure, I don't even know where to start, but um, all I can say is that um, I was a, a pastor in the church. Uh, I was a leader, one of the leaders in the church, and I was also a member of the protocol team, you know, that also, you know, played a security role for him and his wife. And this is at the church and um, at home and outside, you know. So we used to travel with him, we used to you know, spend time with them at their house, you know, so um, even some of the church affairs, you know, were involved. I was one of the people who was involved with, um, you know, one of his work, you know, the right-hand man you were talking about last week? Yes. The pastor that didn't answer the phone last week. Yes. Um, so I was also, you know, um, right next to, to that pastor. So we were, you know, running his affairs and doing everything. So, just, just to give a, a little bit of background from, from my point of view in terms of when I joined the church, you know, I was invited by a couple uh, in 2017 to come and come to the church um, because they, you know, they know that I used to visit um, the church in Pretoria. So now uh, in 2017, I came and when I immediately when I came, I mean, I was driving an S3. Um, I was, you know, having a, a nice job where I was earning a good salary um, and that same guy who didn't answer the phone last week, he then targeted me and said, look, um, you know, the man of God has favored you and he loves you and he sees so much in you, that so much that he wants you to be close to him. Um, you know, then he talked about how grace has found me and he wanted me then to, you know, seed towards the anointing so that the anointing could work more in my life. And mm -hmm. that's when then I decided, okay, fine, if, if you know, I'm, um, if if this is this is going to work for me, I mean, you know, if the things of, of the world do not work for you, what more about the things of God? You know, you know that if you seed or, you know, you you give, you shall receive. So that's what I did. I gave in, and I started seeding. But now the the calls started coming in. You know, every now and then you need to seed for this. You need to seed for that. Um, even the man of God himself, you know, called me into the office and said, "Look, you have found favor." God is going to anoint you, you're going to be a millionaire, this and that, and, you know, gave some lousy prophecy. And then he, you know, he told me, you must give to my wife something that you've never done before. And I gave a, a huge sum of money, you know, as seeds. But now, like I said, the seeding kept on coming. And I kept asking myself, when will this end now? Because then the next thing it was uh, his birthday, then it was his wife's birthday. And I mean, in the first four months or so, four or five months that I was there, I had seeded something close to like 60,000. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fine. Uh, fast forward. Then he brought me closer. I had some issues at work where I had resigned. And then I came and I told him about my issues. Um, and then he just told me, you not know, God actually wants you to be here. Hence, you are going through what you're going through. So then, fine. I, I you know, became close to him. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, I started using my cars and using everything that I had, um, you know, to assist the ministry as well. You know, I wanted to be part of something. I wanted to 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 serve God. You know, I thought, look, if this is my opportunity that God wants me to drop everything and, and work and serve him, then so be it. I will do that, you know. Not knowing that he was actually then, you know, I was actually falling into a trap, you mm. know. So um, I started becoming close to him. And now, remember, I had resigned at my job. Now I'm now serving him in the church and in his private capacity. You know, um, 24 hours at his house or, 
if I'm not at his house, I'm on standby. So I can't go anywhere. I can't go hustle. I can't go do anything because I'm on standby waiting for him to say, to give a call and say, come now. And I need to be wherever he says, you know. Um, and to be quite honest, you know, um, I never but, but knew. Bangani, but Bangani, yes. you're, way older, you're way older than him. I know there's people who are talking. But yes. but you 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 shouldn't you shouldn't allow him to mess with you like that. Well, look at, at the end of the day, um, Solomon. You know when when you go for the things of God and you're looking at that this is a man of God, and on top of that, I did not know his age at the time. You know when I joined the church and so forth, I only discovered his age at a later stage. You know because of how he also presents himself. You know he he has a certain demeanor where he's very domineering and even how he speaks. I mean from the first day you come to the church, um, how he addresses people like people way older than me, double my age, and he's calling them sons and daughters. You know, so um, mm -hmm. then I I thought well look if if you know older people are doing it then it means it's the right thing to do. You know, um, and yes, you know, we are, you know, we fall for the trap and we are foolish for it because remember, you also don't know what's right and what's wrong in, in yeah. you know, in, in these things. You're trying to think, I've never been in a, in a prophetic church. Maybe this is how things are done here. So let me learn. Let me see how things are done, you know. So you do fall for the trap. But honestly speaking, I, I, I started realizing slowly but surely that, you know, there's a lot of things that are ungodly. So, so to, to, to say a, the least, you know, a, a lot of things or, or my, my gripe with a lot of things is the fact that, you know, Jesus is used, you know, to, 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 to do and all the, dis, you know, the evil things that, that are, are taking place there, you know. And I personally didn't, didn't have anything against the, the, the man. And, you know, even when I was serving, serving there, I, I just thought to myself, look, I'm here to serve God and I'm, I'm going to do what, what, what God wants me to do, you know. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that um, I did not agree with and I even questioned a lot of things and I was sidelined. You know, Marshall was there last week. Uh, Marshall was one of the people who came in to replace me because, you know, um, people would come to me and complain about certain things or if they didn't have a seed, I'd be the one to sort of push them in and say, look, you need to see a man of God. I don't understand this concept of if you don't have money, then, you know, you can't, you know, have, have speak to the man who can speak to God on your behalf as he puts it, you know? What, what, so, are, what, are, what, are, what are some of the, the, I mean, you, you lost a lot of money. I don't want to say you gave a lot of money because that's losing yes. money. That's not yes. even money. Those were yes. not seeds. Or manipulate you lost a lot of money what are some of the yes. ways that you gave and you were manipulated well, to for what and for what and for what all right to start off with the first seed that i gave was uh, when i first arrived in, in in january 2017 and then i was told that you need to give um a, a seed of uh, 1917 you know so that you can you can even write your prayer request 12 prayer requests for each month and which was a norm every year something that was done and um that's the first seed i did and i wrote my prayer request and i, I handed it in and i you know said look i wanted to get married i wanted this and that prosper in business and so forth so that was the first seed then the second seed was uh when he then he you know i was called by you know the 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 guy his right hand man and said look I we we want to we want to make sure that uh, we honor our father so um you know uh, i think we need to buy a camera in the church and they asked for 10 grand you know then i arranged 10 grand and i said look okay fine i don't have the 10 grand i'm going to have to hustle quickly because at the time i was okay you know i was in a position where i was able to afford and i was able to to you know hustle quickly get some money and put it together you know, um, then I managed to get the 10 grand, send, send it through. Then shortly after that, then I was called to the office to say, look, um, you know, God has favored you. God wants you close to us, but you need to give a seed to, to my wife because I, have ne I had never asked anyone to seed to my wife. So then I gave uh, 25K, you know. To his wife? Um, For what? For what? Just, For what? just to give to his to wife, just wife. so that um, I can, I can uh, because remember, he says that the wife is... Uh, he, the, our prophet and he is our our god so don't tell, then me, I'm, don't, tell was, me you, don't, don't tell me you call that girl mama <laughs> <laughs> yes unfortunately <laughs> i did <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> we did and that's the truth that's the honest truth i mean um 
this is no lie. I mean, we like I said, you know, you know, uh, Solomon. People think we want to. We have a plot against the man of God. We have something against him. But these were our lives, which were destroyed. Not a man these of were God. our lives. These are our situations, uh, or our, you know, our situations that we had, our experiences that we had to go through. It's easy mm -hmm. for somebody to say, "Ah, well, you are lying, or you are going against the man of God." Um, and and the the funny thing is, the people stop who, calling who him man of church, God. The, mm. No, I'm, I'm talking in the reference that that I thought. You understand oh, what I'm okay. saying? So, so now the the people who used to come to church, they they knew, they know me very well because I was one of the pastors in the church, and they know how I used to stand for the right thing. You understand? Hence, I was sidelined a lot, even in our in our meetings. You know, I was put aside because now I was always questioning things, and I was always, um, you know, this one thinks he knows he knows a lot. You know, so that's why I then decided, you know what. Um, I'm going to, to walk away from this thing. It, it took a while because, look, the brainwashing that happens there and the deceptions. I mean, I get manipulated so that I can manipulate Pharaoh so that Pharaoh can manipulate uh, uh, um, Buddha, you know? So that's how bad it is. I mean, this guy is, is a master manipulator. He takes his time okay. to plan to, to, you know, to he doesn't make a move without planning. He does not make a move without you know, doing anything. So he is very, he's well calculated. So you need to know that he's very good at what he does, you know. So hence I'm saying it's it's easy for anyone. Ask ask the millions and the thousands of people who've fallen for, for, for the traps and the gimmicks, you understand. Even more so for us who were even close to him and walking with him and his wife, you know. That's how bad it is. I mean, as, as much as I'm, 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 I was way older than him, or I'm way older than him, but how he conducts himself and how he 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 does things it's it's in a way that it's very convincing but very 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 sly you know and and he'll he'll make sure that he he tries to make you understand that he's on your side he understands you but it's all a lie it's all a lie and even even people who are there now right now who are his leaders and whatever they know exactly what I'm talking about. They know they're just scared to talk, to speak out or to say anything. Because even when I was there, you know, I was also scared to say things. I was scared to share things or to, you know, say what, what I see because of, you know, you, you think of all the power and the money that he has behind and all the support from the UK and from the guy in Pretoria. And, and he's going to threaten people with that. And that's why people are scared to speak. You know, people are scared to come out and say, these are... And, there is no support from the guys in the UK. There's no support from the guy in Pretoria. They also want to get from him. They've they've gotten from him. It's a cartel. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's well, at the end, at the end of the day, like they are untouchable. That's not the truth. Yeah, at, You've got too much at the end money, of the brother. day, he tries. He uses that as a, as a as a scare tactics to people. I mean, no, just just uh, the other day, I received a call from the UK, um, and then I knew it was them. I knew they wanted to say whatever, but I just decided, look, I'm not going to say anything. Even just today, just before I went, I, yes, I, I went live. Tell us about it. Today, they they trying to threaten your family. Exactly, they contacted my family. And they tried to get them. Uh, because look, my family goes. Unfortunately, they still go to the church um, with, for the guy in Pretoria. So they tried to get my parents to call me or my brothers and everyone to say, "Look, don't don't do this. Don't go against that guy." And I said, "Look, at the end of the day, it's my truth. I'm the one who went through what I went through. And why should he call? Go to the extent of calling my parents and my family to try to stop me from saying." Whatever I need to say, if it's if it's a lie, it's a lie. Then people must not believe it. You understand? But I'm here to speak my truth. And even those who who served with me, they know, they know exactly um, the type of person I am and and the things that I used to stand stand up for. You know, I mean, I was a pastor. I was a youth pastor, and I used to deal a lot with uh, some of the youth. Um, and and I was in the you know I had I was leading the youth committee, and even the guys in the youth committee, you know, are, are like shocked as to you know, the, the things that are coming out because they didn't know. But some of them suspected, you understand what I'm saying? But only now that their eyes are being opened and they are seeing what is happening. And and the funny thing is, you know, as soon as I left, because I asked to leave and he refused at, at start, at first. And I told him, look, I have to go because I, I need to go attend to my family because now my, you know, my, my relationship with my family was falling apart. Um, I was not spending time with my son at all. You know, I was losing touch with, with the relationship I had with my son. Uh, and look financially also, remember, I'm a pastor, I'm a leader in the church, I'm protocol, 
but there's no salary, there's no remuneration, nothing. Okay, and this is the person who I I used to have you know debts. I used to pay for cars. I used to pay for this and that. And mind you, I lost two cars at that as well. I mean, I used two cars to 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 you know to run around and help, um, thinking that I'm I'm working for the ministry and I'm helping to build the ministry, but but for what? Nothing. You know, I sold one of my cars so that I'm able to pay for my rent, for food, and for other things. Just you know, just just to survive. Because I mean, look, there's no income. There's well, nothing there. We're gonna come back to you. I sympathize with you. You lost money. That's what it is. You, you, you it's like going into a casino and you never won nothing. Yes. It is money what it is. You, you lost money, and we're gonna come back to you later and talk about you losing money because obviously this guy is a charlatan. This guy is a fraud star. Mm -hmm. He's a fraud star in suit. He's a fraud star in suit with the Bible. That's who he is. Lately, I see he's calling himself Doctor Mizuwaik. Where did he get that PhD from? Rubbish. Rubbish. There's no Rubbish. PhD here. Go he back woke up one day and decided. He must go back to you know, we were we were we were on our way to Pumalanga when that uh, doctor name came up. We were on our way. I think it was like that's when people actually started knowing about that name. We had just driven past Nell Spray going to Hazerview and Sop, the guy that was on the show last week. I overheard them on the phone telling him to design a poster and put doctor, don't write. Ms. Mzwake Tancred, put doctor. I'm a doctor. And he was excited and jumping in the car. And um, the wife is the cheerleader. Like, she's she was hyped up at the back. And it, it just became a joke. And uh, that's where it came from. It, it never came from VUT. Mm -hmm. It never came from Harvard or whatever. It came from a drive oh, to Mpumalanga. Yeah. Actually, prison break. But <laughs> when we were driving to Mpumalanga, he announced it. He announced okay. it on our way to Mpumalanga. Yeah, that's where the doctor name comes from. Or when Sorry, people Solomon. started knowing about it. You, you know what? What actually irritates me is that the lies continue. You know, you know when somebody Rish. even lies inside church, you know, on mm. the pulpit, lying to people. Even yes. now, he's lying to his followers, and they they believe him, and they still share his post. Mm. They still continued brainwashed, you know? And and what's sad is that the people in the church are the ones that are suffering. I mean, mothers, can you believe mothers in the church, they left the church because they were complaining that they were not being heard and they were complaining that they were played as, you know, they were spoken to as children. You know, when you rebuke a small child who's like six years old or 10 years old, and these, we're talking yeah. about mothers and fathers. I mean, the husbands and wives, and we're talking people who are even much older than me. You know what I'm saying? Bongani, and, and, Bongani, but that's what you get from a narcissist. He's a narcissist. That's 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 what yeah, you get from that's, him. That's the I've right way. Yeah. I've got a report from the Free State of a group of women who have a stock fail, uh, who invested 300,000 rand. Women ages between 40 and 60. They, he told them to invest 300,000 rand, and in three months, they're going to get a million. This is about a year now. They haven't received their money yet, and they're getting frustrated. So that guy is a thief. How about we call him a thief? You know, he's a thief because that's... Small boy. He doesn't that, know what he's doing, that boy. I don't know any other way to describe it. When you are defrauding yeah, yeah. people who are needy. But Bongani, that's why you are here. That's why your story is very, very important. There's, I see there's about 1,819 1, people right now watching. That's just now. And then there's going to be people that are going to watch on YouTube later. That's why your story is important. You know, just so you can share with people. And it's not just your story. It's the story of the truth. So when we tell the exactly. truth, we're telling the story of Jesus. You see how it is. You know, when we exactly. don't tell the truth, we're telling the story of Satan. So he's just using the, the church, the New Life Church. He's carrying the Bible and creating all these posters that we're going to talk about later and deceiving people, telling the story of Satan. So he's a thief. Thief, thief, thief. In Nigeria, we call them Ole. Ole. In Yoruba, he's, a, he's an Ole. Ole. He's a thief. He's an African thief. <laughs> if you speak Swahili, call him a thief in, in Kiswahili. He's a thief. In Hausa, in Nigeria, we, you know, that's spoken around West Africa. Barao. That's what we call them. Barao. He's a big thief that just disguises himself with suits and taking all these pictures. And You know, that guy is... That baby charlatan, he, he needs to be, you know, you know what you do with younger people in Nigeria? I'm older than him. No. You, 
if if younger people mess up, you you put your finger like this and you knock their head. You 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 knock. That that's what it is. That's what he needs. Thank you for the tip. Thank you for the tip. Because he's not even no, smart but, enough. He's not even wise but enough. But this one is not enough. Yeah, he, you know, this one needs more than that. Too. He needs to go to prison. When he goes to prison, then that's where he's gonna take it. There are, there are rape issues around him. There's people who have lost money. You think he's gonna continue like that for how long? He's probably gonna run away from the vow. That's the next thing you're gonna hear. Solomon, that's the sad part. Do you know how many ladies came to me? Because obviously, like I said, you know, they would not go to the to the other right hand man because he they know he's for him and he's for you know all the e ugly things and evil things that he was doing. You know that the main like guy was doing. Guy. So, so they would come to me and tell me all these stories that I would also keep to myself and say, look, let God deal with it. Because even with me, for a long time, I was like that. I was like, look, this is out of my hands. I'll deal with, you know, I'll let God deal with him, you know, and, and whatever would, happened would, to me, it happened to me. He will come down from heaven and deal with it. How would God deal you with see, it? But this, deal that's with the thing. God is now using... Exactly. Exactly. And, and and what's worse is that he's trying to do whatever he can to, to, to silence us. You know, why do that if ever you, you've got nothing to hide? Why, um, you know, delete the church page? Because a lot of people were hurt. You know, I'm, I remember I was the one who was telling Marshall and I say, Marshall, do you know how many people are actually coming to me and complaining about what you are doing and, and the false prophecies that you are doing? And the people are aware. And Marshall at the time, you know, he just brushed it off because he was still in it, you know, and thank God he's out of it now, you know. But um, I, I just want to say that a lot of people came to me complaining and say, look, what's happening there is not right, you know. But people are scared to speak out. People are scared because of how he has brainwashed people and how people think he, he's all powerful and he has all the money. But but at the end of the day, somebody needs to say something. You know what I'm saying? Because whether you believe about, me or not, something about this is challenge. the truth. You see Bushiri, you see Uber Angel, you see people like Zondo, you see people like like Zwaike. They're um, all living in India every single day. Forget about what they how they project themselves. They all live in fear. They've offended a lot of people. They don't know where somebody is gonna hit them. They live in fear. So they live a very terrible life. I don't feel sorry for them. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, they need to confess, they need to repent. And they need to pay the price. If they need to go to prison, they need to go to prison. You know, Marshall was here last week. Marshall just sent me a message now. He's actually driving from somewhere. So he's not going to make it to today, but he's going to make it uh, next week uh, we, when we're going to bring this to a close. Next week, Thursday, the same time at 8 p.m. But we need to share these stories. If we don't share these stories, then we're going to be handicapped. That's why exactly. I give you guys home. That's why I, I do what I do where you need to share this. It's your experience. He can threaten or say you're going to take you to court or whatever. If he takes any one of you to court, make sure he will take all of you to court. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If he, if he yeah, touches Solomon, all of you guys, make sure he's touching all of you guys. What's more important, and, Solomon, than anything else? There's there somebody that actually, if, if somebody, I'm not even going to mention where she works or whatever, but she approached me today to say, look, hey, we're ready to give help, legal help if need be, yeah. against these things. So do, do not, it's your story. And you can't go to court exactly. and 10 of you saying the same thing and he's saying a different thing and then the court will believe him. Exactly. No. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> if you know the legal yeah. system, it's not, you know, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Pharaoh, yeah. a lot of people are commenting, they say they want you to say something. <laughs> Look, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start, Solomon. I have a lot to say. Um, I have so much. All the lies and um, the manipulations that happened there were just bad, beyond bad. I mean, um, for instance, let's talk about the, the truck story. You know what happened with the truck story? You see those Photoshop pictures that were trending everywhere, and the, this boy once took out a poster saying that um, let me actually uh, show, let me actually show people I'm, the truck yeah yeah thank Go you These those are the trucks truck, right? those are the trucks there are two and pictures if 
I want yeah, somebody so to screen problem. grab this so they can see the difference. Yes, look at the trucks. Look at look at look at where I'm, I'm right right there. The first truck right there. Look at the door yeah. of the first, first truck right there. And this is obviously yes. uh, in some in some you know shop where they where yeah. car shop where they where they, they sell all this truck. And then he yeah. took this and he asked this. You're going to tell us a story anyway. But this is this is what he tried to create. So you that, see the that first. Was, it was it was done by Anza, the guy that went live with us last week. And, you see the first truck there on the door mm. of the first truck. What was written there? Tranquedi Global Investment. Tranquedi tr tr Global Investment. Now, Investment. again, yes. this is the first one. So took this photo <laughs> yes. and then touch it and put yes. this Tranquedi yes. Global Investment and then yes. shoot this on social media for everybody mm. to see. And then mm. you see the first truck, you see his name there, you would think, that belongs to him, and every other mm. truck right there on the queue belongs to him. So he's a multi-millionaire. Mm. Mm. He's not a multi-millionaire, he's a thief. Mm. Explain that to us, Faro. <laughs> Look, um, this was initially my my business, I should put it like that. Or maybe, not. let me not say a business. This was an opportunity presented to me by one of my varsity friends because um, we used to chill together. And one day um, he gave me a call and he's like, hey, Pharaoh, what's up? I'm like, nothing much. Because he, he used to see me sharing posts of the church on social media. He's like, my guy, what's happening with you? This is not the Pharaoh that I, I know. And I'm like, hey, guy. He's like, so what you pushing now? I'm like, hey, bro, it's tough. I was told to, to just focus on church and leave everything else. And um, look, um, I... I, I basically don't have anything happening, you know, because I wouldn't say something was happening because I didn't even have time for my side hustles. Like I couldn't do anything. So the guy says to me, look, I'm going to connect you to this other white man. Uh, he works for my father. I want you to tell him that you got my, uh, his numbers from him and um, you guys will work together. There'll be something for you there. So uh, I thought it was a joke. Uh, the next thing, I didn't even have to call the white guy. The white guy calls me. He's like, hey, Waldo. My other name is Waldo. And then he's like, hey, Waldo, listen, I got your name from ABZ. And then uh, he said, one, two, three. And I'm like, yeah, I've been meaning to call you, but I've just been caught up in other things. I'm like, so what's the deal? He's like, uh, listen, my friend, you need to come to my office so we can go through this. Um, I believe... Uh, you are the right person to work with. And um, I said, okay, it's fine. And then remember, I'm under this cult where whatever you do, you need to report to Papa. So stupid eye, well, smart eye or obedient son eye or uh, a straightforward son eye went to Papa and told Papa that, um, listen, uh, I've got this opportunity and this is what's happening. And he's like, my son, you know, from the first just just lost him there okay just lost him is is Wu, are you here okay we haven't gotten the time okay anyway let's introduce gift gift you know you worked with the protocol um how did you get in and um what did you see and what made you leave Yes, sir. Uh, I was part of the protocol team. And uh, how I started there, I remember very well. Um, I got to the church uh, a couple of months later, let's say maybe uh, two months later, I decided that uh, I wanted to be in the ushering department. So uh, one of the guys at church told me to speak to Bayanda, uh, the guy that they, they, they always talk about. I did go to Bayanda and tell him that I wanted to be in the ushering team. So he said to me, I should go speak to Kibotile. That's when uh, I went to her and I told her that uh, I want to be part of the ushering team. And she said to me, uh, wait, uh, let me speak to to Papa or let me speak to Mama Charisma. Then if they do agree, then you'll be part, part of the ushering team. So, okay, since then I was just an ordinary member. I was just coming to church one month uh, plus second month. And then I was asking Kibotile, uh, what's actually happening? I want to be in this thing, you know. Then she said to me, uh, they haven't responded as yet. Once they respond, 
then I'll tell you. And then, okay, um, two months passed. Then uh, we're in the third month. In the third month, I remember uh, Uber Angel was coming to, uh, to the VAB. We were going to have a service there. I remember it was a day service. The service was starting at, at around uh, 12 o'clock uh, up until midnight. So, so what I did is uh, I left school really early that day. I uh, went to my place, uh, showered, uh, then I got to church. When I got to church, uh, I found the guys working. I found uh, uh, Faroa there, I found Zubu. Uh, I think I found um, Bongani as well, and the other guy who's in the protocol team, who's Peter. Uh, these guys were working there. So at that time, I was just an ordinary member. I didn't know these guys quite well because I was one guy who would go to church, uh, just attend church, then I would leave direct immediately after after this. I would not engage in conversations because I was just there to, you know, to know God. That that that, that was just it. So uh, while we while, while those guys were still busy uh, preparing the church, cleaning the church, installing a couple of things, uh, then the, I wouldn't say the man of God, uh, Miss K. Uh, when Miss came, I was I was outside of I was outside of the yeah, church. The team, the team, the team, the team, the team. Yeah, the chief. I, I just want you to give me that uh, that that name. What do you call it in 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 in, in your language? Ole. What? Ole. Ole. Uh -huh. Ole. 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 Um, he's uh, they're driving him in a, in, a, in, a, in a Ford Ranger. So where I was, I was, uh, I was uh, at, at, a, at a quite distance. So, so he called me. He called me. He was like, uh, I've been seeing you here in church, and, uh, and, and I see you're very muscular. So what I want you to do is, because Peter is busy today, uh, I want you to be the guy who protocoled me while Peter is still busy uh, uh, organizing uh, everything. I was like, okay, it's fine. So they just showed me what to do. They showed me a couple of things to do. And uh, that very day, I was just with him. We we're going to the mall, coming back to church. And uh, I had a chance to to be with him, just the two of us. And what he said to me was like, um, uh, uh, you're just going to uh, do this protocoling thing for just today. So uh, you just need to learn a couple of things. Then uh, maybe by the grace of God, it might be a, a forever thing. I was like, okay, I, I don't mind. So fast forward, uh, I was at the church for, for like uh, one year, six months. So when I was there, you know, you, you, you get questions like, uh, I'm here for, for, for a particular reason. There are certain things that are not going well in my life. You know, my family, I need prayers for my family. You know, given the fact that I'm in a prophetic church, uh, I'm going to have that need of getting a prophetic word that uh, your family will be fine. If somebody is, is, is sick in your family, uh, that, that very person will be fine. You know, uh, unfortunately, I never got prophetic word. It's only now that I'm outside of the church. The reason why I didn't get proper is because the one person who never spoke about my business. I never told anybody anything because uh, Miz is one guy who 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 prophesies based on uh, the information that he gets from Bayanda. So at that time they had nothing on me. That's why it was it was not possible for him to prophesy over my life or prophesy on anything that has to do with my family. So uh, as, 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 as time went on, uh, you know, we would have holidays, June holidays, December holidays. I would not go home. And home, they would wonder, why, why are you not coming back home? And then I'll tell them, I have this thing that I'm doing at church and I'm serving and, I, and I'm enjoying it here. This is the reason why I cannot come. So they were surprised even during uh, December. I didn't even go home. Uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve, I was there. They're wondering, that this is the first time this happens. Why are you not coming home? I'm like... I'm doing this for a very good cause. I'm serving God here, you know. So uh, I finally said to them, you know what? Uh, I want you to come to church and see what it is that I'm doing here, you know. And at that time, uh, I remember my dad was sick. Uh, my mom was still was going uh, was going court cases. There was a, a issue with a, with a, with a house that she uh, she built for her grandmother that her sisters had sold. So she was still busy with uh, with the court issues with the very same house. So with my father sick and my mother going through that, I'm like, uh, at that time, remember, I was still thinking this is a genuine man of God and what he prophesies comes to pass. And I'm like, I need healing for my dad. And, I, and at the same time, I want uh, 
my mom to win uh, the court case because it has been prolonged for a very long time. It started probably, let's say, 20, uh, 2008. And in, that, in the year that I'm speaking about, I think it was 2017 or 18, somewhere there. So I'm like, okay, uh, let me tell them to come through. So I called them. I'm like, uh, come to church. Uh, remember, uh, they had to drive uh, more than let's say 600 kilometers, uh, then it will be two and from it will be 1.2, uh, 1,002 kilometers. Okay, they came, um, uh, they attended the service. Then I told I told uh, Amis, I'm like, uh, my parents are here. Uh, while they're here, I want you at least to, to like uh, give them a prophetic word, have a one-on-one a one -on -one session with, with my parents, given the fact that they came far and they just, you know, they have their personal issues. Uh, then uh, I, he dismissed me. He never said anything. Then I said, uh, I said to 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 Bayan, I'm like, Emana, uh, it was it was almost after church. I'm like, Emana, my parents are here. Make a plan that they see uh, me. At that time, I still called him the man of God. <laughs> I was like, uh, make a plan that they see uh, the apostle. So yeah. Uh, Bayanda was like, okay, just tell them to to sit uh, next to the door office there. Then uh, the men of God will see them. I'm like, okay, it's fine. So uh, a few minutes before they entered the office, this is what happens. <laughs> and at that time, I didn't know. You, you get what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't know all these things that are happening with the church. Bayanda sneaking out, getting information, giving it to the men of God, and the men of God uh, giving it as a, as in a form of a prophecy. I didn't know that. So Bayanda comes to me. He asks me he asks me questions about my family. He asks me questions about my dad and my and my mother. He's like, "What does your dad do?" Those kind of things. And uh, how is the relationship between uh, you know? I had to tell them that um, uh, dad, uh, the, the 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 man that I call my dad is actually my stepdad. You know, I had to clarify that. I remember that we had uh, my sister had came as well, and I I I, I told him that. She is actually my stepsister and stuff like that. And my mother is in the catering business. Uh, you know, I told him a whole lot of things. So at that time, I didn't know that he was going to tell the men of God. He was going to tell that boy, Apostle Meath. <laughs> so what he did, uh, before they called my parents into the office, he told me everything that I told him. So me did uh, mm. give gave them the same information in a form of a prophecy. And at the end, he just gave gave them uh, a sort of a, a fake declaration where that everything would be fine. You get what I'm saying? So when they came out of the office, I see my sisters yeah. cry. Then I'm wondering, hey, okay, did it go well? What's happening? So I had to ask my mom, I'm like, what happened in there? And she was like, no, um, oh, he uh, he prophesied and he spoke. Uh, the reason why Komucho is crying is, is because... Um, um, what do you call, uh, your apostle mentioned that uh, we are not really uh, family, step, uh, step, stepdaughter, stepmother, you know, stuff like that. Then I'm like, okay. At that time, it didn't click that I, I had just told Bayanda that information. So I'm like, okay, I, had, I just had to dismiss it. I'm yes. like, okay, it's fine. Then uh, my dad was like, uh, man, I need you to, to drive us back home. I'm tired. I can't drive that whole, that whole distance. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Then I went with the back home. Then when I came back, remember now uh, they were in the office. My parents were in the office with uh, me, right? Uh, my mom told uh, the guy that uh, he's in the catering business and the court case is not going well. My dad did mention uh, that he's, he's sick, but then he, he, he wanted uh, at least uh, uh, the guy to pray for him so that he, he could be well. So, but then my dad did tell him that I, uh, it might be because of age and stuff like that. So when I came back from the vow, this is what happens. The first service, I think it was on a Tuesday. So my mom had called me and said, uh, she said, make a follow up on uh, the, 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 the prophecy. I mean, uh, 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 on the man of God that uh, I need a prophetic word or maybe as, uh, an instruction to do in order for, for the case to at least be won. So, uh, I told I told Miz, I'm like, uh, yo, this is what my mother say. Or what? Then Miz was like, uh, give me the the court case number. Uh, as a matter of fact, send it to Peter. Peter is the other protocol guy. He said he said send me the, the court case number. Then I'll print it. I'm like, okay. 
uh, really, I'm telling him uh, right at the spot, I'm like, no, I know it by head. Let me give it to you now. He's like, no, send it to Peter. Immediately, I send it to Peter. But then here's the thing. When I send him the, the when I gave, uh, when I sent Peter the, the, what do you call, the court case number, I missed uh, a digit and, and, and a character on, on the very uh, case that I sent to Peter. Then on yes. Sunday, on Sunday, this guy comes. <laughs> Uh, this boy is full of dreams. On Sunday, this guy comes. He's busy. Uh, you know, you know the, the prophetic things. Uh, he, he had come to that point where he has to start prophesying. So he starts with me. He calls my name. It's like gift. So at that time, uh, you know, I'm protocol. I, I'm with the guy. I don't expect him to prophesy me since he has never even prophesied me. So this guy calls my name. He's like gift. Then I'm busy with my own things. He looks at me. He's like gift. Yeah, you. Then I look at him, he's like, uh, uh, your mother has a court case. I'm like, here, yeah. your mother has a, uh, has a court case and I'm going to tell you the, uh, uh, the numbers right now. I might not call them in, in the exact order, but the court case number has, he was like, at first he was like, no, write it down. Somebody yeah. gave me a pen, I wrote it down there, yeah. wrote it down, gave it to, to the guy who had the mic. Mm. So he started calling the numbers. He started calling the numbers. This guy's like, it has a one. It has an eight. He called, he called all those numbers that I gave him. But then he missed the one number that I didn't give him. And he missed the character that I didn't give him. So I'm like, oh at the time, I'm like mm. because, you know, I'm still like, I, I still consider myself fresh in the church, you know, with the guys who was boo because I found them there, you know. So in my heart, I'm, pro I'm like, Ah, uh, maybe this guy is just testing me. He's just he just wants to see how loyal I am to the church and how loyal I am to him. You know, I just okay, I let it slide. Okay, fast forward uh, a couple of Sundays uh, later, probably let's say two Sundays later, he comes at me again. Hey, this guy, this guy is big. Yeah. <laughs> you know when he when he, when he runs out of prophecies, when he runs out of prophecies, he makes sure that he finds somebody that he can hit. You know. So this day, I don't remember, uh, it was uh, a woman's, I don't know, it was a woman's what, they, bought, they had bought a cake. The ladies bought the cake for, for, for charisma and the, the mothers. So they bought the cake, they came with a knife at church. So the knife was just uh, sitting there, like where somebody can see it. So on that day, I don't know that service, it was a kind of a, like a special service where he teaches people how to prophesy, but then it was a lousy teaching then. Uh, I'll tell you that it was very long. So he teaches people how to prophesy. It's like, no, you can use anything. You can just uh, connect it to the spirit and, and the Lord will tell you what, what is, is it connected to, you know, stuff like that. So this guy is moving like in between lines. Then he sees that knife. What is this, that knife? So now he wants to prove that you can prophesy with everything. So he turns at me. He's like, gift. Uh, I, see, I see your mother. I see your mother chopping like this. Chopping, chopping, chopping. So I'm confused. I'm like, huh? So the guy, who's this guy? He, he, this guy who had a mic, he's like, I'm like catering, catering. I'm like, yeah, 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 <laughs> catering. <I'm> doing catering. <laughs> remember, I do remember. Talented. And to remember, when I was in the office, he told this guy that pray for my business. I'm in a catering business. So this guy is like, I see your mom. business. Business will boom. She'll have a lot of money. So he just left it like that. And at that time, I had forgotten that he had a session with my parents. And they told him that. You, you get out of me. So I'm excited. I'm like, okay, it's good for my mom now. You know, money's coming. You know, who wouldn't be excited? So... Let's leave that one. Let's get to the second one now. So the second one is after a couple of Sundays now. And I'm like, remember, my dad is sick, right? Uh, the, he, uh, my dad told him that uh, I'm sick. I'm not well. I don't feel well, you know. So this guy, he comes at me now. Yeah, yeah. Now, remember, he has, he has information about me. He didn't have information about me. He couldn't prophe prophesy me for like a year and uh, six months, seven months, simply because Nobody knew uh, my story. Nobody knew anything that I wanted. Nobody knew anything about me. It was only then that he started prophesying. So this guy, what he does is, I remember it was a late service. Hey, I remember these days like it was yesterday, man. So 
he comes at me. He's like, give. Your father is sick. I'm like, hey. At that time, I desperately want uh, healing for my dad. You, you get what I'm saying? He was really, really, really sick. So I was really, really desperate for him to at least speak a word, uh, a declaration for my father to be well. Why? Because he portrayed himself as somebody who, who, who can heal. He, he, he would tell you that uh, my shadow heals. People have, have, have been healed uh, from HIV with my shadow. You know, stuff like that. I'm like, I need the same experience for my dad. If, if, if my dad is sick and my dad is going to pass away, then man, do something. Do something. You get it? So now, what he does, he comes at me. He's like, man, your father is sick. Then he tells, he tells the story that my father is not really my biological, uh, my biological father, but then he mentions the fact that uh, we love each other. You know, su such things. When he said such, such, such things, I fell into tears. Like, I fell into tears in front of the whole church. Imagine now, the protocol is crying. I couldn't hold it. I wanted to hold it, but then I couldn't. Why? Because it was close to my heart. Given the fact that my dad is sick, my dad is, is just about to die. You get what I'm saying? So... He gives a declaration word. This guy gives the declaration word that your father is healed. I'm like, I take it. I take the declaration word. He was like, as a matter of fact, go outside, call your dad, tell him that he's healed. I'm like, okay, I'm giving an instruction. I go outside. I remember I was borrowed a phone. I, I, I think, who borrowed me that phone? Somebody borrowed me a phone and I called my dad. I'm like, uh, the man and, of and God. The, At that time, I still and the people the in the, God. And the people in the church were shouting at me. Amen. Hallelujah. Every time this guy prophesies, for all those prophecies that he made, he, he made, people were shouting. Now, this is the thing, Solomon. I feel like I'm responsible for a lot of souls that are in that church because uh, he prophesied these things in the name of God, like he had them from God, but then he didn't. And I didn't say anything. So the people in the church believed that this guy is called by God, and this guy is hearing from God, simply because I didn't say anything at that time. You get what I'm saying? So I felt responsible for, for, for a number of people who are there, who are being deceived, who are being milk, who, who are being manipulated and, and being taken a fool. You get what I'm saying? So your, your, your father died four days later. My father died four, four days later after he had declared. So what happens is, come again? After the prophecy and the declaration. After the prophecy and the declaration, my father, my father passes away. So what I do is they, they, they call me in the morning, in the AMs around 12. They're like, no, uh, your dad was in ICU. He passed away. And I'm like, shucks, I'll be there like today. So what I did is I tried to call the guy i tried to call me but then his phone was was off i don't know what, what was happening with his phone so I, I i called peter and i told him man tell tell me that this is what is happening my father passed away and i need to rush home right now because we had this system of you know before you go home you need to tell the man of god you cannot just leave you, you we had a lot of things solomon that i cannot even talk about now but this is what i'm going to talk about here so i left home uh in, in, in a mentality that uh, my man of God will actually call me and check how am I doing, how is the family doing, given Never. the fact that I've, I've, been, uh, I've been serving this guy for, for more than, for close to two years now. You know, I, I had put my life on the line for this guy. Had anything happened at that time uh, while I was serving that uh, the, the guys that uh, were mad at him, the guys, I remember Marshall uh, told a story about the guy who came with the gun at church. So had that guy decided to, 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 to shoot a gun at that time, I was going to be in the firing line. So I'm like, somebody that uh, I put my, line, my life on the line for would behave in this manner, then what, what if something really happens? What, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family there? Because I take most of the time, most of my time, I give it to the church and I give it to this guy and my family is getting nothing at this time. So I'm like, hey, Anything happens to me, this guy won't have to do any, he won't have to do anything with it. He will, he will just let it slide like he, he did it with my dad. So this guy didn't call. He didn't do anything. Uh, and he didn't even announce it at church. I, I'm going to tell you the reason why he didn't announce it. So when I came back, uh, I came back um, 
Yeah, I think after a week, after a week, uh, after a week of the funeral. So yeah, I went straight into protocoling. So I was hoping to at least hear from me, hear from him asking, how was the funeral? How are you doing? But then I never heard that. I'm like, no, 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 no. Some, something is up here. But then when when this was happening, most of the times, if 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 you check if if Miss lies or does something that is out of the word or does something that it's not right, look at charisma. Mm. You always see that oh, oh, you always see that oh, changes. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. She doesn't like, agree with half of the stuff that you say. That's true. So, yeah. So when when this guy was behaving some type of way at that time when I came back to the church, now something was like, now you really need to be observant. So I started checking her charisma, checking her movements, checking her looks. Then that's when I, I was able to tell that, no, this guy is not genuine. He never said anything. Then I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cut myself from this guy. And uh, well, one thing that I will add, uh, well, what is it that, that I can add to the story? Uh, which is true, of course. It's not a made-up story. It's not a made-up story. It's very true. Miz cannot prophesy. He doesn't hear from God. If he hears from God, he hears from Bayanda. Or he hears from, from, from the father from the UK. Kudani, 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 Kudani. Yeah, and, and, and Gudani as well. Uh, I promise you, I promise you. He has never said anything that uh, I've never told anybody. Like I said, one year, six months, mm. never said it. He never prophesied. He never did anything simply because I never spoke to anybody in the church. It was after my information and my family's information was disclosed to him that he was able to take it and give it a prophecy. All so right. that is my testimony. That is my testimony. Uh, okay. He's not a man of God. He doesn't hear from from God. That's what yeah, I would that, say. That's that, personal that, experience. Yes, yeah, uh, like people from the people that he has put in your lives, he planted them to get information and then give it to him, and then he uses that. That's that's uh, <laughs> that's you know that guy is even you know he thinks he's a con man. You know, not even a good con man. Uh, Subu, everybody wants you to speak. Oh, for sure. <laughs> uh, let's go on with your story earlier on. I mean, you knew yes. Miss from day one, even before the church yeah. started. Yeah. You know, so you have that kind of experience. What was your experience with him? And you were there for quite a long time. You only left last year, isn't it? Yeah, I was there for like uh, seven years. Okay. This seven years includes. Um, Obviously, the time the church started, this was 2013. So, yeah, I have been I've been with a guy. I've seen people come and go. I've seen people complain and stuff. But yeah. you, you were there when everything started. When he arrived yeah. at the yeah. University of Kentucky as a student, you were there. Yeah. You had friendship yeah. before the church started. You had friendship yeah. when he got kicked out of school. Yeah. Did you help him to get kicked out of school? Did you help him to manipulate things no, no. yourself? I, I, I didn't do that. Um, how he got kicked out of the school? This was in 2017. His his PA, Pastor Bayanda, uh, they found him cheating. So they had created a student card which had a name of of of, of Ms. And mm -hmm. so obviously they found him cheating. And um, the case the case was a big case in VUT. Um, so that's how he got expelled from school. But I didn't help him orchestrate any of those things. Okay, but what was your experience with him anyway? Um, look, um, you know, when I met this guy, I thought he's a genuine man. I thought he's a genuine man of God. I thought he's interested in, you know, bringing unity among the youth and, you know, preaching the word of God and stuff like that. Um, so obviously it took me quite a while before I can finally see, you know, the light. When you are there, your, your mind is captured you lose your, you know, your sense of reasoning. You lose your humility. When you're around the guy and you see stuff that he does, obviously when you started, it was fine. It was cool. We were still students. The friendship was just purely based on school. We used to study together. You know, this was before the church. This was before the wife came. This was before everyone who was around the guy came, you know, purely from day one. Um, things were fine. So when he, when he started the church, for the first year, it was still fine. Now, 2014, 
you know, there was a rape allegation that came against him and it, it sort of shifted, you know, how I, how I perceived him. Tell, um, tell us about that rape allegation. What happened? So what happened is, so the church had started at the, at the time. Um, so the lady came. So there was a lady. The lady is still there in his church even now. So what happened is she was crying that she wants to kill herself. Um, um, so I went there with one guy. His name was, was KG. He's now in Deben. So we went to the lady. She was crying. She was devastated. She was depressed. And we wanted to hear her side of the story. What happened? And she, she said to us blatantly, blatantly, and she said to us, I was raped twice by this guy, by this man of God. And it was something new. It, is, it was something that's, that I, I didn't expect. And we, I remember we spoke to her. We said, are you sure? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you sure you're not lying? Are you sure this is not something that you pretty, you know, you prearranged or something that, that is just purely made up? And she said, no, she wanted to kill herself. And we oh. spoke to her, to her, we counseled her, with, obviously with the help of other people. And Solomon you know, how things just twisted. A couple of days later, she she, 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 now, she she was no longer saying that she was raped. She now changed her confession. She was now saying that um, I was paid money by other men of God to tarnish the image of this man of God. And you could see that she's lying. You, you, you could see lies right through her face. You know, but mm. being a person that doesn't want to judge anything, I just, you know, chose to, to, to put it under the carpet and I allowed it to slide. And I, I asked Miz about it and he said, you know, the lady was paid up, but you could see that, you know, I mean, lies, lies are lies. You can't hide lies. And we kept quiet about it. Life went on. And it's something that we never wanted to dwell on because, you know, I, I at, at that time, I didn't even know who to believe, but I could see that the lady was lying. You could see that clearly this is, this, you know, somebody spoke to her and, and made her change her mind because the way she, 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 she spoke about the rape, you could see, she, I mean, she cried. And she, this is somebody who wanted to, to take her life. So you can't just change randomly like that. And you suddenly you have another confession that, um, no, it was just all made up. Somebody paid me. They wanted, they, they wanted to take me down and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, those are some of the stuff that happened with, 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 with the guy. Mentioned that the, the same lady is married to a pastor in the church. Funny enough, funny enough, funny enough. Yeah, Thoreau, you're right. Funny enough. The, the, the same lady, you know, is married to a pastor in the church. We didn't call any names. So the, the, the same lady who was crying rape, who was crying suicide, she's now married to a pastor. I mean, how miraculous mm. is that? You, you understand? So we we allowed it to slide. We I mean, look, this is a guy that I, I loved. This is a guy that I genuinely turned my back on my mom, on my, on my entire family when they warned me about him. This is a guy that I, I would put, I, I, I quit school to follow this guy. When he told me that God called me, um, God is going to take care of me, I, I, I stopped literally everything about my life and I went to follow this guy. So this is a guy that you protect, you know, his reputation, his integrity with, with everything that you have, you understand? And so the rape allegations, they, they slide it, everybody forgot about them. Fast forward, 2017, he gets expelled from school and he was found cheating. The pastor was found cheating. And um, this became a big case in the school, you know. So... Uh, my seven years with, with, with this guy, if, if I was to summarize it, I would say if I know hell, it is because of this guy. If I know what hell is, it is because of this guy. I used, you know, the, the way this guy watched us suffer and what breaks my heart, Solomon, is this is a guy that I started from, you know, from, from, from day one with him. And seeing a man give, you know, money to ladies and yet he sees you suffer and he doesn't even do anything about it. He doesn't try to, you know, help you get into business. He doesn't try to help you 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 are like his best friend at one point and and, and day one yeah. nigga. Uh, so yeah. obviously you would have. Seen, how, how was his love life? How was his relationship with the woman? He said he gives money to women even before he married his wife. What was? I mean, you must have seen him getting away with sure. women and for sure. and for a pastor doing that kind of stuff. Tell us some of the scenarios where he was with women, having sex with women or whatever. That you know, look, if you say you are a pastor, you shouldn't be doing all this. Yeah, for sure. Look, uh, there was there was one lady. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna mention her name. Um, obviously, in fact, they, there's there's a whole lot of them. Some of them I don't even remember their names. This are uh, this this was when we were still in school, right? Um, so obviously he would hide, but he thought that I don't I, I don't see all these things. I was I was always vigilant around this guy, and um, so he would all obviously he had uh there was there was a lady. In fact, there were two of them. One was from I remember one was from Sasolbeck, right? Um. 
he slept with the lady. And we were still students. He was a pastor. The ministry had started. And he thought, I don't know. And I kept quiet about it. I never confronted him about it because this is a pastor. This is a man of God. You are trying to, you know, give them that respect. You understand? And fast forward, um, another lady came. Look, in fact, this, this guy had a disease. He, has, he had this pervasive, insidious disease of promising ladies that he's going to marry them. And he doesn't, he doesn't even pitch up. You understand? When, when he announced his wife, uh, to the church there were there were a lot of ladies there were about three ladies that got bro- had broken and these were ladies that mm. were promised marriage by this guy you understand these were ladies that had had expectations of marriage these were ladies that were told how they're going to be the first ladies you know how they are going to be taken care of and stuff like that so genuinely his his, his relationship he was a, he was a guy that loves women you know he was a guy that you know obviously women you know they are they are attracted to guys that wear nice and smell good and stuff like that so he knew he was a smooth talker he knew how to you know how to get into their brains and how to manipulate them into thinking that um he's going to have a relationship with them and stuff like that but you know so knowing him from from that point of view before he before he even met the wife there were a lot of ladies you understand so he's he's, he's always been a guy that sleeps with ladies but we always kept it quiet and kept it under wraps because we try to protect the guy you know? Does he at one point did this, does he abuse alcohol or drugs? I I I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know about. Uh, let me not lie. I I don't know about drugs and alcohol. I won't lie about that. Perhaps maybe he did it when I was not watching. But I don't know. I don't know about that. There was a point in the church where they said that the way he he came out uh, one of the service and told people that you uh, know how to interpret tongues. Yeah, yeah. He said, well, "I know." How did that? How did that happen? Do you know how to interpret tongues? Can I go? Can I speak in tongues now? Rabara, Ruka, Shika, Rante. No, 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 what am no, I no, saying? No. There's, they, they, look, there's nothing like that. There's, there's, in fact, let me tell you something that I never told anybody. <laughs> he came out and was tell telling us. the congregation that. Look, Solomon, this is this is a guy that um lies about everything. This is a guy that uh, you know, in fact. I feel guilty as it is now that um, I'm not telling the whole truth, right? So in 2014, what happened is I was helping him to prophesy, right? Um, I was I was also known as as a prophet that was raised by me, that was prayed for by me, and um, I'm gonna come to the story of interpreting tongues. So when what we used to do is we used to be known in Pumalanga where he comes from. We used to go to University of Limpopo. We we we, we, were, we went to quite a lot of places, right? And we were prophesying there. And how we were prophesying, I was prophesying with this guy. How we were doing it is I would have information about who I'm going to prophesy. I would know, I would know their name. I would, you know, he, he would give me their names. Um, he would um give me their phone numbers, he would give me stuff that I needed to know for me to prophesy. Right, and this uh, people genuinely believed that we were prophets and we were prophesying. Funny enough, is the information that he gave, he gave me of everybody that I, I used to prophesy. These are people that he knew. These are people that at some point in life he had interacted with. You understand? And uh, as embarrassing as it is now, I, I mean, I want to sleep with a clear conscience, knowing that I have not, you know, uh, I, I, I have no stones that have have been left unturned. So with the issue of interpreting tongues and interpreting dreams and whatever, that is just a blatant lie. It is just something that is purely made up from the mind. It is based on his ideologies of what he thinks people, you know, people are saying. You can, I mean, you can say something in tongues now, and he comes and says, "No, you are praying for a car." He says, "He says God." I mean, he hear, he's hearing God saying, "You are praying for a, for a car, and you are going to to buy a car, or whatever." So he's just genuinely telling people what 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 comes to his mind he just knows how to put excitement into the into the, into the hearts of people he knows how to tell people what they want to hear you understand so there's there's no such that boy cannot prophesy he is not a real time prophet he can't even come here and tell all of us who are here what's going to happen tomorrow tell me how you also collaborated to 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 steal money from people make people give you guys money how did you you were a part of that you know? Look, uh, he was he was very secretive about about when it comes to money. I won't lie, he was very secretive. The guy that knows the church affairs and yeah. obviously the finances yeah. of the church is Kudani. You know, this is a guy that he calls his brother. People know him as his brother, but the actual fact, the truth is, this these people are not brothers. They are they are from different demographic. These are people that are not brothers. 
You know is, so is, is, is Gudani still a slave in that church? He's, I think a slave is an understatement. When you say a slave, it's, he's not happy. He's not fulfilled. He's, he's just stuck. So I, I, I don't know what words we would use, but a slave, I feel like it's an understatement. It's, he's, he's doing all the dirty work for this guy. He's, this is the guy that used to book all the guest houses that they could sleep, where, where, where this guy used to sleep with ladies. This is a guy that knows where, where he, you know, he books all these hotels. This is a guy that we used to chat with women that means used to chow. This is a guy that knows all the dirty stuff, stuff that the wife does not even know. You know, I mean, I, oh. I stayed with these people, Solomon, in their house. Mm. They they have a place where they hide where they hide money. The wife does not even know that that stuff. You know, she doesn't even know where they hide the money for the church, the offering and stuff like that. And so so this is a guy that orchestrates every move that this guy makes. He orchestrated. He knows the church affairs. He knows about the money, where the money goes, um, how much people give, how the money is spent. So he knows exactly where every single penny of the church goes. You understand? So this is a guy that orchestrates every every move of me, including the ladies and the money. Okay, we're gonna come back to you because I think you would have a lot to to share because you know some of the undercover stuff. But let's go to the lady in the house, Kibotile. Kibotile. Uh, you had, uh, let's revisit the, the HIV miracle, HIV negative miracle that, that was, uh, you know, where, but everything was cooked. So one of the, the, the gal who was prophesied that uh, she has moved from HIV positive to HIV negative asked you to share on her behalf. Obviously, she didn't want to, to come out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, she asked you to share... Uh, on her behalf, just just what what really happened. But this is actually what, uh, uh, if we can see it very well, this is actually one, one uh, what he posted, uh, what was posted in the church, and this is like a testimony time. So it was publicly that she 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 was HIV positive, but now she was HIV negative. But all that was just cooked, was cooked up, and 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 all these are lies. She asked you to share what really happened in that case. Um, okay, actually, she's, we are actually close, uh, Mina and the girl. Okay, she's a good so friend of yours. Yeah, I actually didn't even know about her status. So we were in the USAFE building, and Muzaki was like, he's going to heal people that have chronic diseases from HIV to cancer and blah, blah, blah. And then everybody who needs healing must go to the back. There was... A, an empty room at the back. Um, so everybody went there, and then that's where he said that he's gonna heal these people with his shadow, and yeah. they must they must look at him as he's, he he's, passes. Yeah, he's gonna heal them with his shadow. When he passes, his yes. shadow is going to heal them. Okay, yes. okay. He passes. I was also at then the, he yeah, them. He said there must be in a line. Okay. Then he's you... gonna start from the back of the row going to the front. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then he did that. I was actually ushering at the back with with him as he was doing the shadow thing. But uh he did the shadow thing, he passed them and then he went to the front. He said, Look at my back, I'm gonna change, blah blah blah. When he did that, I actually ran out of the room because he released something. I don't know what it is, but then there was just a heavy presence. I ran out of the room. I went where the congregation was. I actually ran to Mas Chava crying. I told her, like, please, let's pray. Like, Papa just did something, and I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel right. Okay, fine. And then I remember... Um, the girl who who's on the poster coming out uh crying and then I, I forgot who was holding the mic testifying that uh she is healed from HIV. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Who was holding okay. the mic? Who yeah. you yeah. you yeah. were you were holding the mic in that uh that fake miracle so you knew about it. Yes. Okay. Did you know All that right. they were faking it? <laughs> You knew that they were faking it? I, I, I was suspecting, but I was not sure. 
But I, you know, you know, obviously, <laughs> when your instincts come in and you, 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 you say, who was who had the mastermind then? Marshall and who? Marshall, Marshall, it, it was, and it Bayanda. Was Marshall and Bayanda, ba- Marshall and Bayanda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was their department. Prophecies healing their department. Yeah. Okay, all faith miracles. Bayanda and Marshall. But Marshall is yes. out of that place now. Praise God. But Bayanda is like the chief. Creator of fake miracles. He, he now. runs. He runs the church or the cult. He runs the church. Yeah, for sure. I see. Okay, so Bayanda, but he's also a thief. Okay, Kibotile. All right. So uh, she came out crying. I remember her vividly. So, and then as uh, Buddha was saying that uh, she was HIV positive. Now she's HIV negative. The nurses tested her at the back. Blah blah blah. And funny enough, all the nurses that were testing these people are no longer in the church. So why would you see God at work and disappear from the church? But those are the questions we we would ask ourselves, but we wouldn't have answers. Fine. Um, Shapo, she went back home. She went back to her doctor, and then the doctor tested her. But from the doctor's side, she was still positive. Then she came back to, to the church, went to Bayanda, told Bayanda that, okay, fine, you guys healed me. Uh, but then I went back to my doctor. The doctor says, I'm still HIV positive. And then Bayanda was like, no, let me talk to Mzwake. And then um, Mzwake, uh, oh, and there was a seeding in between there. After she, she was healed, they wanted a seed. Uh, to seal her healing, and they told her that she, sorry, she needs to give them money. Yes, to seal the the healing. So actually, they are selling the healing. Okay. Um. So uh, she gave a seed. She actually wrote everything down for me. It's just that I forgot to jot it down. I think she gave with one one thousand nine hundred. Uh, okay. Fine. Um. Then uh, they said to her that uh, she must uh, stay in the church. She must continue coming to the church to maintain the healing. So this Jesus needs you to come back to the church to maintain the healing. She was staying in Midrand. She would drive down to the Val every Wednesday and every Sunday and every and Saturday every when Saturday. we have it, when we have it. evangelism. Evangelism. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, fine. Uh, okay. Fine. I don't know who's uh, who. I don't know. Uh, who, uh, who, uh, sorry, guys. Get, me, sorry, guys. Get, me, sorry, guys get, me, there's echoes. There's echoes. Yeah, there's echo. Yeah, there's echo. Yeah. A lot of. We can. We can. Mic. Mic. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. All right. All right. We're good, yeah? Okay. Go on. Is it fine now? Yes. All right. Um, then um, Bayanda told Mzwake that, okay, this girl is saying that she went to the doctor and the doctor said she's not negative. She's still positive. Then uh, Mzwake uh, addressed her, told her that, look, you need to have faith. So give me your, your pills, your ARVs. Then he took the ARVs and told her to stop drinking the pills and use her faith. And she is healed. The God of the house, the God of new life has healed her. Fine. That happened and she stopped taking her pills. Um, I think for eight months until she started seeing that her eyes also opened. She started seeing that uh, uh, this place is 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 a scam. It's when you talk about triple M scam, that was the scam. So when she she her eyes started opening, she went back uh, to to the no, she went back to buy a home kit, the one that Marshall microwaves at church. She bought it for herself. Uh, Then she tested from home and then it showed 
it was I think it was blurry. It wasn't showing properly. She went back to the doctor. The doctor did check her, and she was still HIV positive. And her CD4 count, uh, like the count, was was very low because she hasn't she hasn't been on her medication. So probably she was gonna die just like that because uh, Muzaka is just so desperate to perform. He's just so desperate to use the name of God in vain. Like this, this. It hurts me that he he can risk with your life just so that he can get liked, and and as we on this, he did the same thing with my dad. They asked me to bring my dad to church because I've been saying that my dad is sick. My dad is sick, and finally, I asked uh, my brother-in-law to bring my dad to church. Then my dad came to church. Um, my dad has sugar diabetes, um, high blood pressure, and both his kidneys failed. And at that time, he his his leg was broken. So um, he went to the nurses on that particular service where we have two services, one in the morning and one at night. They said they must test him, his blood pressures and sugar levels, and uh, uh, they're gonna. Um, drop them with the spirit of God. So the nurses tested him and then when he came in, they're like, Buddha and Buddha, you are the one who was doing my dead these things, but I forgive you. Uh um <laughs> and <laughs> and uh he Ooh. was like no wait he what did he wait what did he had what did he had sorry Sorry. Ah, uh, Svu, can you unblock? Ah, uh, Svu, get your mic. Okay, Svu. What happened? Get your mic. Okay, Svu. What happened? Yes, it's fine now. I think it's Faro's. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yes. what happened to her dad? Look, when 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 the dead came, um. When you are in that place, you're forced to, 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 to bring out a testimony. You understand? So with, with, with the issue of her dad, it was, it, was, it, was, it was forced. We had to dig it. We had to make it happen. We had to, you know, we had to convince the people that this is something that's genuine, if, even though we knew that it's not working out. But at, at that time, you remember, you are trying to please to impress the crowd. You are trying to, to, to get people to believe that this anointing and this grace works. So not only did we do it to her dad, we did it to quite a lot of people. Um, I think in in University of Limpopo, if I'm not mistaken, there was also an issue like this. I don't know if Kebotila was there. There was also another man who was on a wheelchair. And we, we, we pretty much did the same thing to him. You understand? So when, when you do those things, you have to force a testimony. You have to force the healing. You have to, you know, even when you see that this person is in pain, but you you you, you genuinely want to get people to to believe that there is this miracle. I mean, there's this anointing of healing, and you know, there's this power. Even though we know blatantly that it's not there, but we 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 always had to fo- find a way to force all these testimonies. So she's not lying. We we did it, and not only to her dead, but I'm 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 very sorry for that. Yes, I wanted you to ask for forgiveness there. Yeah, okay, sure. good. Yeah. Go I on. forgive you, Spuda. Thank All you. right. Um. Then. Uh. Then they said my dad's blood pressure uh, is has dropped with four what what and his sugar levels like they just tried to do something but my dad doesn't talk or anything so he was just there quiet and then. He had a cement on his leg because it was broken. And then Zachi was like, uh, you're actually healed. How long does it take to remove that thing on your leg? And then my and then uh, my dad was like, no, I, will, I don't want to. The doctor said, I must come next week. So the doctor will do it. And then he shook his head. Imagine. A a boy born in 1994, shaking his head at my dad, who is born in 1962. Fine. He shook his head. This guy, he doesn't have faith. Okay, moving right along, he said, who came with this man? I I said, 
he's my dad. He's like, fine, come, come see me in the office after church. After church, I went to the office with my dad. Hello, I've been serving in this church for six years. I went to the office with my dad. When we got to the office, my dad was on crutches. And then he's like, oh, so you are the dad. And my dad is like, yeah. And then I'm like trying to explain to him my dad's situation that my dad has sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, his kidneys have failed. He, he's actually not mobile and he's, he's been having this disease for a long time. And mind you, there was this guy that once came to church and Naya, he was going uh, to dialysis and Muzake said he was healed and uh, they can take uh, body parts from heaven and you can receive new body parts. Ini, ini, he, he did that. Okay, fine. Seeing that, I believe that, okay, the same thing can happen to my dad who has been struggling for years. When we got to the office, I'm trying to explain to him what's happening. And he's like, to my dad, can you walk? My dad is, is like, not properly, I can limp. I can stand without the crutch, but I have to use it to walk. And then he's like to Peter, he's like, ah, this, this girl is dizzy. The dad says he, he can walk. Fine. Uh, and then I tell him that, can you also explain to my dad why you said that God said he must change my name? He, he, he said, laid back with attitude and say, ah, this one, we changed her name. And I was there like, is that the explanation that the man who named me Gibotile? Like, is that the explanation that my dad deserves? But I was quiet. Fine, he did that arrogantly so. And then uh, after that, he held my dad's head for like two seconds. He said, Lord Jesus, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you are healed. And then I had a seed in my hand, a thousand and something rand. And then I had to put it on the table. He said, give it to my wife. I wanted, as I was giving it to Charisma, she, she didn't want it because she saw what the husband did. Okay, and then uh, after that, he, he tells Peter to take my dad's crutches to open the office door and raise them up. That this man came here without walking. Look at God, look at God. I remember I was crying hysterically so the church thought I'm crying because my dad is healed, but I was crying because of what he did to my dad. After sacrificing so much for that church, after sacrificing my years in varsity as a student, after sacrificing my pocket money to share with the students in the church that didn't have shoes, that didn't have Food. and he claims to pay fees for, for kids in the church he doesn't he claims to pay for, for, for rent for students he doesn't okay it is what it is the church is celebrating that Peter is holding my dad's uh, crutches and my dad is limping and the, the, uh, then the church is celebrating he's going to the car uh, fine. Uh, when we got to the car, my dad doesn't talk much. He just said, please come home. That was, those were his words. He was like, please come home. You need to come see me. Those were the words that he said. Moving right along, he preaches on the pulpit. He said he's preaching about Eunice in the Bible that transferred her faith to somebody. I forgot the scripture. And then he makes an example with me. He's like, a hey, young lady, stand up. Your father was healed by your faith because you sowed a seed. You put money on my feet and your father was healed by that. And he's like, stand up. And you're standing up. You're like, what the hell? What the hell is happening? He catches you off guard. Like, you don't have time to dispute or to say, no, nigga, what's happening? So those are the, 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 the two testimonies that I, I can say I relate to what Gift said, that he just 
scams you right in front of your eyes. But what's sick is that he's doing it at the cost of people's lives. He doesn't care whether you die after that or not. So, how is your dad today? Uh, he's 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 still alive, but obviously his kidneys are still not functioning. He goes to dialysis. What did how did you feel for you being there in front of somebody you trusted with your life, Nzuaike, and then lying to your dad, and I would say even abusing your dad emotionally and physically because he did that and using him. And using he used him. him. How did you feel for you as, as a daughter? I, you feel? I felt unworthy. I felt betrayed. I asked myself, what kind of God is this? And it's not only that. It's not only that he's done so much. I remember when I reported sexual harassment in the church i went to the wife mind you i had to have a seat to go to the office because you can't access them without money i went to 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 the office with money and i remember crying hysterically so telling them that i want to go home i don't feel safe mzwaki was not at church that day and Chloe was like, what is happening? And she didn't even give me a chance to talk. Immediately she's like, uh, these guys are after you because you're no longer praying. If you can ask anybody right here on this live about my prayer life in that church, they will tell you how prayerful I was. Even the people in the comment section, they can attest that I was a very prayerful young girl. Fine, he said, I don't pray anymore. And she asked me if I went back to having sex. And I'm like, I've been celibate from the day you guys separated me from Tepo. Like, and then after that, she's like, no, uh, you, you just miss home. No, I, I'm just giving you an idea of how lame she can be when it comes to advising. She, she can't think for herself because... She must tell the husband before she addresses you. She can't think. Okay, fine. It is what it is. Um, I went back home with the same Mohadi, the one that they faked her HIV uh, results. I went, I went home with her after telling them that I want to go home because I want to feel safe. Fine. Um, I went home for a week. I think for a week and then when I got home I got spiritually attacked I just want to say this because it's something that we don't share that leaving that place it's not just living with your body you get spiritually attacked you get attacked okay uh I got attacked I didn't even go to Limpopo I went to Pretoria to my sister when I got spiritually attacked, I was like, okay, it means that maybe God doesn't want me to go home or maybe I need to be close to the anointing or to the grace or to the covering, the umbrella, how they put it. I went back to Val. When I got to Val, Muzwaki was angry at me. He didn't talk to me for a month and weeks. The day he spoke to me, I remember I was wearing a pink dress and a fur scarf, pink. We were at the back of the church. We were going to tithe. When we were tithing, he said to I and Warona that you, you don't pray anymore. You don't pray anymore. The last night I was with Warona, she slept over my place. We prayed. So, okay, fine. Maybe there's another rank in the spirit where we should be praying. I, I don't know. Okay, then he set me aside. When he set me aside, he's like, I, I was very angry at you. And I'm just going to give you advice. You should stop going into the lion's den. How do we go into the lion's den? If you, as the pastor, you call meetings that end midnight, that end very late, you, you, you prolong services 
to end at night and people should take us home. Your sons should take us home. How, like, what is happening? Okay, fine. He said he was angry at me and blah, blah, blah. And he even said it in front of, of, of the church. I remember Putty was there. She remembers the story of him saying that he was mad at me, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. And after that, uh, we were moving to the new building uh, by opposite sports betting. And then he said that he doesn't want me to be in any department because uh, because he's angry at me. And on top of that, if your father in this sense is mad at you, it means you must beg, you must say, no, daddy, I'm sorry. Should I be sorry for being sexually violated? Okay, fine. Um, after that, um, when we, we moved to the new building, he's like, no, I'm just going to give you a position. I actually don't want you to serve anymore. I'm just going to give you position because it's grace. And he did not only do that to me. He did it to other girls that every time they report sexual harassment, he will just say, I forgive you. He never goes to the guys or he never calls you to resolve this thing and get to the bottom of it. We are always blamed for everything. Okay. So, so he, does, he doesn't care about anyone. He cares about his self-image. Of course, that's who he is. That's who it is. Anyway, moving forward, I there's something that you mentioned earlier. I think was it about um, yeah. There was a time that he organized a, a cruise, a new oh, yeah. new life new life church cruise, uh, and yeah. collected money from people. But the cruise never happened. This is supposed to be the poster for the for the for the cruise. It's a new life church prophetic cruise, you know, and yeah. uh, 18. Uh, did that cruise happen? What happened with the money that people gave? Only he knows. Only he knows. He, he didn't. Did uh, you go on a cruise? Nobody went to a cruise. People had to pay deposits for 4000 I think the cruise was 8000 or 7000 something. Mm. And you had, we had to pay deposit. And I remember it says Itumeleng that was taking the, the names and the people that were were paying deposits and blah blah blah. I remember Warona was part of the people that called home, told Mama Hey, mom, we're going to a boat cruise. The mom gave her the deposit, a young student at BUT. Did they refund her? Her money? No, they didn't. Her mother said, tell your church that I want my money back. Because you cannot go to Ubaba and tell, her, tell him, Hore, please, my money, give it back. You can't even tell Bayanda. Bayanda is just going to manipulate you into saying, just throw it under this grace, ini, ini, what, 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 what. Warona had to start selling muffins so that she can pay her own mother because she's protecting the image of the church. She's protecting, she's protecting the body of Christ because to tell the truth, Christianity is a joke. The church is a joke right now. So, so these are the guys that are making church like something that is not appetizing. Yes, cruise, cruise never happened. He got the money. It never his- happened. Thief, so we we know he took that money. Even youth, the last youth camp, he it didn't happen. Buddha didn't happen. So Buddha, speak. You know about these monies. The youth camp. Yes, no, look, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um. So obviously he collected the money uh, for a whole lot of events, for a, like a lot of events that never happened. So what they generally do with this money is they just spend it on stupid stuff. You know, they, they yeah, buy stupid to, nonsense. Okay, this is um, yeah. and, and there's also so this, this... That was the, the business, uh, uh, whatever thing. Oh, there is this event right here that was supposed to happen at Carnival City. 
and you collected money. Did this happen? It did. This that one, one happened. happened, but uh, they didn't. The money, they, was, the, yeah, that money was a, the money was supposed to be for students, isn't it? Or for women, for girls to help them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, did they use that money for? But in, I mean, they never helped anybody. They, um, um, can I speak? Yes. Yes, so, you can speak. Yes, you can speak. <laughs> We have oh. one lady. We have one who, lady who um um. I hear what? an echo. Oh, I hear an yeah. echo. Oh. Yeah, that's your echo. Who, with your uh, yeah. Who attended yeah. that that women in pursuit, and they told them that uh, if you have a business idea or you are in school, charisma is gonna fund you. Blah blah blah, and the lady went there. Um, and after that, they only had one Zoom meeting, and after that, nothing happened. So basically, this is how this is their marketing strategy. They they promise you something, then you're gonna buy into what they're promising, and it's not gonna happen. And what bores me again is that he uses students in the church to sell those tickets on campus yes i see i see i don't know who's gonna comment here but i see that there's been a lot of this is an event encounter night at the university of limpopo so obviously he's been targeting students and this is another yeah. one here, encounter night this one at the, at the val university of technology so obviously yeah. he's using students for all of this you know exactly uh, targeting students, uh, which yeah. obviously he, I think he has found, you know, a niche there. And Spoo, this one-on-ones, how much do you, do, <laughs> do you pay to have a one-on-one? -on -one? This is in Botswana. This is a one-on-one. -on -one, and here is another one-on-one -on -one here. Obviously, people pay money to go to these one-on-ones, isn't it? Spoo? Spoo is frozen. So, uh, yeah. do you want, who wants to add some stuff there? Uh, Subu, are you back? I want somebody with the knowledge of yeah, yeah, bad, how it bad. works. This one-on-ones, obviously, is not is not free. How does it work? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, what happens is you 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 book. So here, um, there was one guy who was responsible for this. So people would book for. Yeah, we lost you. Okay. Bongani, are you trying to say something? We cannot hear you. No, your mic, Bongani. So, Bongani, I think you have to go out and come in again. Yes, Subu, go ahead. You book? Subu. Can you can you hear me? No. Okay. He's he's uh he, he's he's gone out there. And anyway, Gray. Yes. What forex news do you have for us? What do you want to say, uh, Gray? Welcome. Uh, Gray, unmute your unmute your mic, Gray. Unmute your mic. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Um, I just wanted to add on on top of uh, this one on one things. How how is how, how are they are actually pushing it? Like basically, what they do is they they have um, um, certain ranges of prices. If you need a certain miracle, if you need a certain way that you, that you need a prayer, or you just need to see the man of God. So this one on one is there is a seed for seeing only the man of God without having the man of God praying for you. Which How much are we like, talking about? Let's throw figures. Let's throw between, figures there. A thousand, one point five. Anything that is less than five thousand rent, you can sit down with the man of God. So literally in a period, uh, in a auditorium full of like two hundred people or five hundred people, around one hundred and fifty, there are people that are, that are that are giving less than five thousand rent. Out of that, there are people that are giving ten thousand rent to fifteen. Some of them they even 
go to an extent where they take their the retirement money, they're going to give the men of God believing that their lives are going to change. So this these things of one on ones, it is just a you know, um, it's just a scam on its own. In the name of if you see me, your life is going to change. If you come into um, wow. into my my circumference, your life will never be the same again. You know, there's one way that, you know, we have literally been in so much, um, been stuck in this thing so so bad that for all these years, even when we were seeing a lot of um, nonsense been happening in the house of God, we couldn't be able to, to, to stand up and say, this must stop or this, why is this happening? Because we felt like this was the way of God. Like we are speaking today, we are all here, we are speaking about our experiences Number one yeah. thing that I know, people at church, they have been told that the man of God is under attack. They have been told that they need to go and post the man of God, write pictures. And we know all the tricks. We know that tomorrow, he, what he did this week of him going to give out to the poor and all of that, that is just a strategy that he uses every time when a storm rises. When people rise to speak the truth, he has to go out there and try to buy people's faces so that more people keep on falling to the very same man, keep on falling to the very mm-hmm. same, you know, Maybe mischief, and this is not going to. Um, both, you know, one thing that I can say again is, it might even come to a point where either he changes the name of the church, or he moves to another place where he's going to start the very same thing once again. It looks like this guy is not even willing to take accountability for his things to stop playing with people's destinies. I wanted to, oh, to also the life of this man, there was this man who, who actually contact, co- constructed a stage at church. It's Mr. Peter. This man, you know, is a handicap. He's, he took his own time, his own, his whole literally time. This man can't even work properly, but he took his time, his own money, his other things to actually even buy some of the things that were needed for, for the stage. After this man had done doing so, he was not even given a single two rent, not even a five rent. What he got was my grace, is, my grace is enough for you and you are blessed. Your businesses are blessed. I mean, how do you bless somebody else with weights while well, this person is dedicated their work and their skill to make sure that the church is able, you are able to stand on the very same stage that you are lying to people about. And at the end of the day, you're not even giving this man what he worked for. You know, that, that, that guy is, um, Zaki, is, 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 is very selfish, number one. Everything that he does, it's all about one man show. It's all about him and what comes to his pocket. He plays with people's destinies. People are crying. Even today, I know of also my, one of my brothers, is Mafuso. He had, uh, there was a year, God, I think, you know, money, he received a lot of money. All of that money went AWOL, truly speaking. He lost everything. To a point, it went to an extent where me had to go and meet up with some guy from Deben, who is a forex trader, so that he can lure Mafuso to invest money with this guy, so that when Mavuso sent money to this guy. Mies and this guy, they shared that money together. So uh, Mies was the one to advise Mavuso that you need to make this certain investment with this person. So Mavuso thinking and trusting that, okay, this is my man of God, or this is a man of God, and he's telling me this, so meaning this is what God wants me to do. And this was even announced at church that Mavuso is going to be very big. It's going to be big into, in terms of investment. It's going to be big in terms of Forex. Because he's met up with the right people. That was only a lie for Mavuso to keep on taking out all the money that he had. And not only that, that happened. When that happened, Mavuso also had to come and give money to the man of God when things were going south. So it's the strategy to get you in trouble. So that when you are in trouble, you go back to him to lay more money to get in more trouble. I mean, if you have been told on a daily basis that you you rather be in trouble with uh, with men than God. That on its own is a selling out. They are selling you out to to to, to the nation, to the people, either to be uh, crucified or to be had. So Muzaki is is a charlatan. He's irresponsible, and again, he needs to stop playing with people's destinies. People are crying out there. People are broken. Families are broken. People divorced because of his words. People have lost their families. People died. When people leave church, they have been told that they are going to die of HIV and AIDS. The very same man who claims to heal people of HIV and AIDS, when they leave church, they are being told that they are going to die of HIV and AIDS. They are going to come back looking for him. They are going to come back meeting him. And their lives, they are not going to make sense. Talking about the properties, what he claims to have, everything else that that guy claims to have, he really has nothing. Truly speaking, he has nothing from the cars. 
that is still paying, that is still failing to, to pay the whatever that is doing. Let me not judge that. That is whatever that is happening. That guy has nothing. That's the reason why he's so much hungry right now to make sure that with this whole thing going on, number one is going to try. Just hold on. Hold on there. Talking yeah. about, I mean, he claims that he has houses and properties and all that yes, kind of thing. Do. I have That's a document. Right. I have a document here. People are not going to be able to see it. These are actually, yeah. he's, he uses, you know, people that he knows, members of the church. Uh, Thank to, you. Yep. To, to rent to, out for him. To rent out. Uh, places where he stayed. This was for a bill of, I think, 15000 I have all that. Oh, uh, you know, there, there, here is another email of, of a member actually saying that, look, hey, here is the, the invoice for the rent. Yeah. They're ordering yeah. the invoice to him to make payment, but the invoice don't come to him. Because maybe, uh, maybe technically, maybe he's actually, his credit, whatever, is not good. You know, maybe he's no, been... No, in, no, in no, trouble. That's why he's messing up, he's messing up everybody. Everybody's here's, here's, another, here's another invoice. So obviously, this guy owes nothing. Literally nothing. Even the cars that he claims to nothing. be having, the businesses, nothing. His nothing. source of income. All those businesses. His source of income, source is, the of income is the church. Where are and his three months bank statements? Yes. Everybody that are in the church, they are all being used to get money for him. We're actually sponsoring this guy's life. And that, 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 that was a, that, that is, here's a list of people I'm not sure p people watching can see it clearly. I, I mean, this is just a first page. There's another page of people who, there was a time that he went to London with his wife and they said they're never going to come back again. That yeah. if people come back, that they need to sow a seat for yeah. them. And I think about 90 people yeah. was collected for them to come back. Now, so times we raise yeah. 300,000. This is how it is. There are people giving 10,000. There are people giving 5,000. And I know a lot of these people are struggling. It's not like they have all this money, it's excess money. You know, you. these are people who are poor. These are students. These are people who would take their pension to give him. These are people who have bills to pay at the end of the month and they don't even have e enough. Now you're in London with your wife just for you to be able to make money off people. You know, you created this huge lie saying you're not coming back. If you want man, the man of God who is a thief to come back, please, you need to sow a seed. Yep. And you make money like this. Yep. Miss is a charlatan, that guy. That guy I is think we raised, um, raised 90,000 or 95,000. 90,000. Just for that, just for him to leave to leave the UK and to yeah, come back. Yeah, he was like... How, how does that like, come back? Yeah. Does he need to get money to fly? If he needs to get money, he should tell you guys. Is that he wants to fly business class, you know, or first class. <laughs> That's more than enough for, for business class. That's the know? thing. He would, he would come back and brag about such things and tell everybody that he only flies first class. And, you mm -hmm. know, he'd be explaining like we've never been on planes. That's how <laughs> much he will belittle you. Like yeah, it's it's sad, Muna. Like it's beyond bad. <laughs> yeah, he will. He he can just come in and start telling you how they serve you and how you eat others. And like he's so stupid. The boy is so stupid. No, the, yeah, I, I think don't know the boy, where he, the, the boy actually has a mental disorder. They, you know he, does. He, has, do. yeah. he does. He does. Yeah. He does. There's something wrong with that kid. Like, There's something wrong with that kid. Yeah, th there's something wrong with him. And then we allow these people to be leaders, not just leaders in business or leaders in... They are leaders in church. Yeah. The place that's supposed to be the safest place for people in the community to go to. And then we have somebody who has a mental problem. Ewart Angel has a mental problem. You think it's normal for them to be doing all that they're doing, inboxing women and, and sleeping with women, left, left back and center and taking money from here, taking money from there, taking money from there. Oh, come on. You get tired of it. I believe it is these charms that they are using. At some point, I believe it maybe it's part of their sacrifices to, to do so. I mean, you can't see you standing in front of people and preaching them about God after the service. You text a sister or a brother. Let me let me let me just remind you of one thing. There's always a mm. prophecy, according to him. He he has this big testimony about properties where he comes in and tells everybody. Ever since I met my father. In a period of three months, I bought three houses. 
And yes. when you do the money. math, like you see those receipts. One, yes. let me tell you, he used to live in a townhouse. It's called Kingfisher, a two bedroom. The rent was yeah. 5,000. Yeah. A lady in the church, all, all, I'm sure all her information is on that thing. The lady mm -hmm. was took the lease, leased out the place for the man of God, that stupid boy, so he could stay with his girlfriend then. And then, yeah. the, and then after that, I think they stayed for a couple of months and then they left. They went to uh, one of the like, townhouses yeah. there. It's called La Perla, La Perla, next to the, the home. Yeah. It's next to the hotel, the Sun International Hotel. He moved in there, and I remember we're coming back from uh, from uh, has a view. It was around December-ish when he moved in there. When he moved there, he told everybody he stays in the most expensive um, estate in the valley. And mind you, mm. like yeah. he was pay the rent is fifteen thousand. How expensive? Yeah. That's like. <laughs> but <laughs> this boy, <laughs> I mean, that boy is this, you, you know you know what makes me sick is that this, this is what he tells everybody in the church like i have this house i, I have it. that house and everybody believes it i have trust I've, I've resigned everybody believes I it i have mine i own, I own check checkers there's a checkers where down the road in, where, in uh freaky mayor i own how checkers. do you franchise the everybody, checkers every, Everybody falls for it. I own Burger King. Then Gudani runs out and he opens a Burger King page. And you know what? Gudani, that lighty, I feel for him because he <laughs> used to come to me and tell me, you know what? I'm tired of this thing that I'm doing. I want to sure. come out yeah. of it. Gudani yeah. and Peter, you know, sad things happened in their life. The boy doesn't care. I remember the, the Peter, the loyal Peter lost his, I think it was his brother. He wasn't yeah, even yeah, given yeah. Money, money to... For a taxi, taxi to go to my Fikeng. Peter came to us. He was asking. asking money. Yeah. He was asking. Say, I think yeah, George, yeah. the the guy that was on the show last week. I remember he gave him I think five hundred for the trip, and that was the first. The second time it happened, Peter never got anything. I think they had a wedding or a funeral again. I can't remember. But then Peter would come to. You see, we were a team. Um, we were the protocol team, and I was responsible for anything that had to do with cars. So the cars, I was the man in charge of all the cars. To see that the cars are serviced, uh, the cars are all in order when we travel and all those things. So Peter was the, the gunman, uh, the toy gunman. By the way, nobody has live ammunition there. Don't be fooled. That big gun that Peter carries, it's a pellet gun. You, should, you, you know <laughs> what, guys? <laughs> It's a pellet gun, and that that one that he always puts on his waist, that nine millimeter, that's actually <laughs> Bongani's toy gun. It's a toy gun. It's a pellet gun. It uses like those steel marbles. Look, that's 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 what Peter is using. The man himself, this boy, he doesn't have a gun. And I remember one day when we were organizing the Carnival City gig, um, I was I was they have two cars, so or oh, three cars. So I had the van. I'm, I was running around because I had to move stuff to Carnival City. So I had the van. So I remember the event was the next day. So the night before, I had to take the car back. This was around, I think, 3 a.m. And I had driven from Carnival City with George uh, Palembe. So when we got to the... Oh, I dropped George first. Then I'm driving to the house to drop off the car because I was using his car. It couldn't sleep at my apartment, like at my place. So I decided, let me just go drop. When I got there, I called him. He was not picking up. I'm calling Peter. Peter is sleeping. Gudan is sleeping because this guy, Busiso was staying there as well with him. They were all staying there with this boy. Yeah. I'm calling yeah. everybody and nobody's picking up. So there's an alarm system. So I triggered the alarm and then the guy woke up. When he came down, you know what he had? <laughs> I'll never forget. <laughs> he was wearing pajamas. And you know how loose the the, the the pajama top is? You can literally see through. So he opened for me. And then I got in. When I got there, he had like a, a baby shoe. You know, I think it was the son's shoe. He put it here. There was supposed to be a gun. And he was like, you know what, son? I was watching you the whole time while I was upstairs. And what? Like, he, the boy's sick, man. The boy's sick. He had a baby shoe here on his waist. And there was supposed to be a gun. And he doesn't need anybody for security. And <laughs> Tell me about the 
property. Tell me about the property of the church. I think I have a document here which says that. Uh, yeah, no, it, everything no. is being leased. Eh? Uh, okay, this is the no, brother, that, the brother, brother King. King he, the yeah. church. He would be, belong and to him. And we, we, we went, while we were back in the Val, um, um, we went to, to Burger King. We went to checkers with Marshall. Marshall and I went there because we wanted to find out what's happening. How how do we how does one get to franchise checkers and all that? That's when we got to find out Neheman. This guy's been lying to us, our papa, the whole time. Because Papa is rich, you see. And remember, you're not allowed to question Papa, and you can't question Papa. So that's just how it is. You're not allowed to to have an opinion because everything is prophetic. Whatever he says. Whatever comes out of here, it's prophetic. So you can never oppose it or ever go against it. So whatever he says, that's the final word. But because we started having doubts, um, we decided, you know what, let's just go and find out what's really happened. And you know, boys being boys, we went there. And just to find out, it's just that I can't say the guy's name. We know the guy that was in, that's still in charge of those places. Those two places, it being the Burger King and, uh, and the ShopRite Checkers. So Mises is mm. living in his own world. Like he's, he lives in his own bubble where he's everything sick. is just made up. He's sick. Like no, nothing is normal. And he uses God. He uses God. Like everything for him is just he's God. If you don't know him, yeah. if it, it, it annoys. Like I would, if I were to meet him one-on-one -on -one like this, I would punch him. I, would, I swear <laughs> I would punch him. That's how sick he makes me. I would punch him for... For, for all the lies, the way he manipulated me personally, for my side, for four years. For four years, I had to be on standby for four years. I, I, would, I would leave everything for four years for him. You call me, you call me around to, I, to I, from your house to go to his house. Dude, I would, go, I would, I, I, I would go home at three o'clock in the morning and he'll tell you, son, you need to be here at seven. Yo. You get home, you just bath and sleep. The morning you can't wake up because you were just running. By the way, uh, Buddha can attest now, Miss doesn't feed you food. There's no food for you. You can't even make tea in that house. The two yeah, other girls can't. that live in that house, when they make food, yeah. they take trays of food and put under the bed. I remember I was looking for a charger and the other girl called Boninga. <laughs> Boninga told me, go to my bedroom. She was carrying the baby. She's like, go to my bedroom and take. When I got there, I just saw yeah. food on the side where the charger was. It was under yeah. the bed like this. Peter, Peter himself, I know he's watching. Peter used to steal sugar. <laughs> One kg of sugar is not even 20 bucks. But the boy didn't have. He didn't have. But I understand. Tea bags was luxury. Five Roses tea bags is luxury. But he goes around and tells everybody, my team is never hungry. And you know, at that time, you can't say anything because Papa is talking. The boys in there, like, they're in prison. They're in prison. They don't... I remember there were days where Peter and Gudani wouldn't even have lotion or roll on. Like, they wouldn't bath, but you'll just come to church. Really, and really, everything was really, normal. Really, every really, morning really, when I go to that really. house, I had to buy food every Sunday morning before the service. I would pass by BP and buy food for... For Peter and I, and sometimes Buddha when he was there. But Buddha would leave early and go to Forgeville sometime. So I would buy food, a loaf or maguinha, or I would buy chicken and pap, like anything they're selling at BP in Fanda. The ladies at BP in Fanda Bell Park, they can attest, they know that Mr. Waldo every Sunday buys food from us. That guy's They know, because the last time I went there, they're like, you don't come anymore. I told them, because I don't go to that <sighs> church anymore. I don't buy your food because there's nobody to buy food for. I was buying <laughs> grocery food. I was buying lotion. I was buying roll-on. I was buying underwear for Peter because Peter didn't have underwear. Peter, you need to fucking come out of that place. You need to come back to your center place. It's not right. It's not normal. I bought him underwears. You know, I would go. I, 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 I have an online shop. I sell stuff. When I when I when I bring my stuff in, my, when I bring my stock in, I would take like an underwear too and give it to the boy because I live with him. Nice. When he when he changes in the morning after taking a bath, I'm there looking and there's nothing to put on. You just he wears one tight and I'm like, guy, this is not it. He wore one shoe for two years, one shoe sure. for two years, and it yeah, was out. Yeah. That's true. 
the, 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 only, thing, the only thing that that Miss bought for that boy, it was shoes from uh, Markham's. You know those cheap ones for four hundred bucks. The, yeah. Like, and the guy's always running around. The boy used to be buff. You see, gift will attest. Peter used to be. If you see his pictures before he joined that cult, and look at him now, you you'd swear it's a different person because when <laughs> Peter joined in, he used to be masculine and buff, but now he's skinny. Like yeah. even he's like he's Ashley skinny. Gray size now. He lost it all. I'll tell you why. Because he doesn't eat. There's no uh, food. The dogs, mm. the dogs of that house, see the doctor. <laughs> they go for surgery. I remember one one dog broke its claw. It went for surgery, and at that time, Peter doesn't have food to eat. He doesn't. Gudan is, Gudan is always leaving yeah. the house because he's being sent around, and Gudani has all of them. So I guess cards. He has all of Miss cards. Gudan would swipe them for himself. And obviously, it was between him and Mzwake. Because Gudani knows everything. He's the one that for is sure. in charge of everything. If there's a girl involved, yeah. Gudani pays for the guest house. He buys the condoms. He's the one that puts the condoms there and tells his friend, listen, what is there? This is there. Rough Rider. It, this is there. Look, Bongani, yeah. Bongani knows. Bongani knows. We left the house so many well. nights. So we many lived, nights. Yeah. And we'll go and, and park somewhere and Papa will tell us, um, I'll be back, son. Just relax here. I need to, to go pray. I'm going to my prayer mountain. But you see this prayer mountain, I'm not going to take you there because you are not ready yet. Just go to Nando's and see what you buy. <laughs> Just go to McDonald's and see what you can have. That's, mm. that's the life. And he's busy there shagging the girls. He's busy. And these girls are all the daughters. He doesn't go out. <laughs> He doesn't go to the street. Like, when you are being shagged in there, you need to connect. You need to come to church, or you must be from another person. Look, this thing is like a circle. It's a mm. ring. You, 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 you heard what that, that lady said earlier on. It, it, it answers a lot of questions that were raised last week. Because now, the ladies, the ladies got something happening with the boy. So, mm. she's having this sexual relationship with the guy and then later on she gets a message from london saying i see you taking get good care of my son i'm coming to south africa i want you to do the same to me what does that tell you about this what does it tell you doesn't it answer your questions from last week to say uh, this it's possible you know you can you can make things for somebody to happen because yeah. mugai looks like you are failing you understand yeah, it's just in, Solomon. Just in case you missed that interview, uh, you know, I had an interview with uh Mzwai case, uh, uh former side chick, side you know, chick. earlier yeah. I had an interview with, her, mm. with me as uh, side chick. So a lot of this condom thing, the rough riders thing, and and Hubert Angel trying to sleep with her, you know, mm. because Mzwai case slept with her and told Hubert Angel. Ah, this girl is this like so he he was angel now got in touch with her inbox her and say look I had you you took care of my son you know when I come to Joburg yeah. you know when I come to South Africa you have to take care of me too so that's how they roll they pass girls around you know so if you want to check out that interview please check it out on my YouTube channel Solomon's Temple on my YouTube channel and also make sure you subscribe to 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 the YouTube channel. I'm gonna. I was gonna come to you, Kibotile, just to talk about how how girls are lured into into all this. Uh, but I see a judge is here. Judge, uh, are you in the car? Is that really your car, or you? you do <laughs> because I don't trust you guys. Like, to make sure you, do, you have to do yeah. <laughs> how are you, judge? No, uh, Mr. Mr. Solomon, I'm very well. I'm in my car. Actually, I had to stop in a gar in, in in a garage because I'm far away from my place now. Okay, okay. But I'll give you I'll yeah. give you just two minutes to 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 say something because this is you kind of like your last opportunity. Next week, so eight, 8 p.m. on Thursday, we're gonna try to have okay. the victims. So some of you guys yeah, are because the victims. We want the victims to come out. People have lost money. People that have been raped, abused, all that. You know. I got a guy who lost a million rand, about a million rand. He was supposed to be studying to be a medical doctor in Cuba. He totally threw that away, you know, and he got into Forex because his wife came on and, and he made money and 
uh, he he lost about a million rand to to to, to miss. So it's it's sad. But George. Yes, Mr. Solomon. Actually, I was listening when I, I, while I'm driving because I saw you posting something about Botswana one-on-one and in, uh, Zambia, I think. Because yes. I was with Muzaki in Botswana from... That time I was with him in Botswana from the 1st of October until month end. We were staying in the same hotel in Botswana, a, a five-star hotel, actually. And then the church was not even accountable for the fees of the hotel. There is a guy from Botswana who was accountable for those fees. He was paying for those fees. Mm -hmm. So with with one on one, there were three ladies from New Life, and then there were also three ladies from Botswana. What they will actually do, they will gather in one room, and then uh, we'll go to services at first. And then when we go to services, we take they take a list of everyone who's gonna attend church. They take your names and your surnames. Also, they take your phone numbers. So after church. He will have a meeting with leaders and then he will tell them that he's going to be doing one-on-one. -on -one. And then they need to make sure that they push to get as many people as possible. So normally they will not sleep. They will push from 8 a.m. until midnight, calling people, encouraging them to do one-on-one. -on -one. Especially mm -hmm. for business, they will tell them to sow a seed for business. If they want cars, if they want promotion at work, they will even advertise it on radios, TV stations, also in billboards in Botswana. That's what we did. So we found on one in Botswana. It was starting from 5,000 pula. Also, there was a one for 10,000 pula. They will send Pastor Bayanda to talk to people. And then what Bayanda will do, will ask you during the one-on-one -on -one that what are you here for and then you tell Bayanda that i'm here to see a man of god for this and this and this and then they will ask you how much you have if your money is small they will put you behind until someone else who comes with a lot of money comes to yeah. Bayanda and tell him that okay i have forty thousand pula i'm here for this and this and this and then Bayanda will go inside the office he will tell mzwake everything so the moment you get there already mzwake knows everything about you it will just prophesy over your life and tell you everything that you told bayanda but yeah. yes after telling uh, and tell you everything that we told bayanda another thing in botswana we hosted a millionaire academy it was a business seminar so on millionaire academy they did they were actually they were even using my car to go around uh, tv stations even the radio station that yeah this, one? this million exactly yeah that Last one, one yeah. so on millionaire academy what they do he was teaching people uh the same and i think those things of then look on youtube how to sell a pen and how to close deals that's what he taught people and then people they were buying tickets for these things so he saw during the seminar that people are not really interested so he started to to talk about us his sons by then he will he made me to stand up in front of everyone. He told people that I'm a millionaire. I'm soon to get married. He also spoke about some of his sons that are doing forex. So people actually were interested in the life that we are living. So what happened during the seminar? He saw that while teaching those things of how to close deal and sell pens, people are not well interested in. He started to talk about something he called snowballing. Snowballing is, is something like uh, what this Bitcoin. He was telling people that they should uh, invest in him. After investing in, in, in snowballing, they are going to receive a return maybe of a uh, 100% in three months. Meaning that if you invest on October, November, December, January, you got, you're going to get your returns. So that's what he was probably doing during the Millionaire Academy. And then Bayanda was there. Bayanda told people he's a millionaire. There are some ladies that they were in leadership. They called people they are millionaires. Yet you those people are not working. <laughs> those people are not working. So I remember the other time also, because me, I'm just here to talk about money. That guy loves money. I know him very well. Mm. Uzwaki mm. loves money, guys. He's a hustler. And the guy. wife. Mm, they love money too much. Even the wife owes me money for car wash. I had to fix their car wash on their behalf. They couldn't fix it at all so another thing when we were moving in that building that they just left recently it's like muzaka was under pressure of finances it was five of us that's when they started with this thing of kingdom financing in new life and then the rest four 
I think that even life, yeah, they are, they are on this life. They left church. Only one guy is remaining at church. We had to raise 250K in five days. It was Monday when we were told that. And then they told us that by Friday, we should be having 250 so that we can mm. sow a seed under the life of our father because we saw everything that he has been doing for the church and his hard work to appreciate him. And then we did it. We did it. We were able to rise the seed. So that's all that I can say about the one-on-one -on -one for now. Mm. All right. Thanks a lot, George. That's... Uh... That's quite a, a mouthful. But let's... Um... Sol Solomon, maybe just to add on, on the, the seed thing. Yes. I remember yes. there was a time when he called departments at night. And these are cleaning department, ushering the choir, everyone in the church to come through. And this was like uh, on a Wednesday night. And the people coming from Pretoria, from Johannesburg, tomorrow they're going to work, they're going to school. And he told... Well, he sent the wife to come through and told the wife that, look... Uh, well, the wife said that we need to honor our father and we need to make sure that we honor this grace because we're taking advantage of this grace and we need to then seed not less than a thousand rand per person. We're talking students, we're talking, you know, 90% students, you know. And he, she said, by next week, Wednesday, every money must be in. Now imagine, you know, people who come to church who are, who are serving and now they must seed with a not, not less than a thousand rand to honor the, the father, you know. These are all gimmicks just to make money. Events that take, you know, that are mentioned, but that never take place, you know. Um, and, and and like everybody has covered the seeds and, and, and you know, the, the, the going into the office, you cannot go and see the man of, of God empty-handed. We What we used to do is that we used to make sure that we ask everyone who's standing in the queue, how much do you have? How much do you have? So yeah. those who had the, the highest amounts, we used to put them in front and he would see those first. And if you had small money, let's say you had 100 rand or whatever, you know, we would even ask you to go put it on the altar because then, you know, he, he doesn't yeah. have time for 100 rand and things like that. So that will be regarded as offering, you know. Hence, I say, I, you know, I used to sneak people in because you could see, you know, some people came there desperately looking for help, you know. Um, and, and it's such things that took place and that, you know, that are shocking. And people are saying but, but, that but, we are but, coming but, up with such things. But, but, but Bongani, what I don't understand is you guys have just been telling me how he made money. So obviously he made so much money. I mean, just in Botswana alone, I'm sure he's going to make so much pula. You know, when you do yes. these one-on-ones, you make so much money. When you want, anytime you want to go see him or see his wife, you take money. So for me, in my brain, this guy made a lot of money. But the question is... What did he do with the money? How does he spend money? It seems like it's the lifestyle. He doesn't own a house. He's renting. No, it doesn't. He's depending on people to keep what, like, what? It's the lifestyle. Happened? It's the suits. You no, know, it's the suits. You know, Mr. It's the Solomon, girls. Man. You know, Mister Solomon. This thing, I think, also he's under pressure. Remember, yeah. this thing is a second. As much as he's taking from us, he has to take the money upstairs to his father. Already yeah. he told his father that already he told his father that he's a millionaire. So he has to prove yeah. it to his father every time that he's a millionaire. Yeah. So I think it's a pressure from upstairs because he's comparing himself with the likes of Major One and the other brothers. So no, he has to yeah. you also have to understand that it's not just about pressure. For you, by virtue of the fact that you miss want to associate yourself with Hubert Angel. He would adopt you as a spiritual son, but you have to pay allegiance to him. Every month, there's an amount of money that you send. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you and Angel does with a lot of other people uh, from Zimbabwe to Zambia to all this, to the USA, all this is spiritual son. J. Israel. He does that where he will come to your church and raise money and take all the money for himself. After he exactly. finished, not really yeah. caring which father would do that. So, but exactly. because he, he, Miss also knows that associating with Hubert Angel is going to boost his profile. So, mm. Hubert Angel is like, you you want me to you want to boost your profile through me? Then you have to pay. <laughs> so exactly. every month is what you have to pay. 
And maybe they yeah. even got to a level where he took him to Sangoma to his witch doctor. Okay, we're going to give you power. That's he did that point. in Limpopo as well. Some, some former son of him. Sorry? Um, um. Yes, you're saying what, Faro? Yeah, we lost you there. Well, Kibotile, we have just a few minutes to go. We, we've shot over time, way, way over time. Uh, you All know, right. and I'm sure you guys know some of the victims. Next week, Thursday, the plan is to try to talk to as much victims as possible. Uh, and then we're also going to have Marshall here. And some of the victims that are, I mean, some of them are not members of the church, but heard about him and believed in the, in the business or believe in what he's doing, invest the money, lost money, you know. And that's what we're going to yeah. do. But uh, Kibotile, there are a lot of girls. Can so you believe? Can you believe? I, I, I used to say yes. I was a yes man to everything. Because the guy in the middle of his bars or a sermon or a service, he would stand up and go like, ask my son there, how much is this watch? Ask him how much. And didn't we buy this in Senton for 600000 I'd be like, yes, Papa, it was 700000 actually. Only, let me tell you where the watches come from. I was lying in church. May God for, for forgive me. Like, we, we said so much. We did so much. Like, there's a guy that left the church. His name is KB. Um, he, he's a traveler. So he used to go to China and buy, like, in a box. I, I'm saying a box because I've been to KB's house. I've actually been to his bedroom. That's how close I was. He was just giving me a tour of his house. He's got one of the most beautiful houses I've ever been to in the whole of South Africa. KB has got a collection of those watches. It's those uh, replicas, you know, like they have gradients, you get your authentic grade and whatnot. That nigga, that boy in Van der Bale wears them. Your, mm -hmm. your Frank Muller's, your Patek Philip, your Richard Miller, nothing is real. Like he, do he doesn't have the money for that. But surprisingly, the boy spent so much money on dogs. Do you know that though? <laughs> the guy spending money on dogs, guys. When he's living with human beings that are starving. That's my problem. And yeah. he comes and stands in the pulpit and says, um, every week, my sons and I, uh, we buy groceries for 20000 And you ask yourself, who's eating these groceries? The Gabagundas at night or what? Because really, like, the guys are always hungry and complaining. <laughs> That's just how bad it is. I've had my fair share, like, in that house. I've, I've slept in that big, big house before. Even the house before, I've slept in those houses. I know everything that happens in there. I can literally take you through the bedrooms with my eyes closed. That's how much I know that house. I was, I was like, you know, you mentioned something uh, about the, the wife earlier on. She's so dumb. Like, I remember we're driving to Johannesburg and we're just having conversation. I can't remember what we're talking about. And she asked, what's the border between, uh, was it Botswana and Nigeria or South Africa and Nigeria? And I lost it. I lost it. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. And because they're sitting at the back, I'm driving. And I looked, the husband was just looking at me. And I just, <laughs> God. <laughs> Guys, you don't understand. When you tell the next person, these things are not real. These people are in the show. They are acting. You know, this these people are Hollywood, man. These people are all Hollywood. Nothing is real. Everything is just fake. Well, Everything you see egg. on Instagram is fake. Oh, the egg. Let me tell you about the egg story. I, didn't I tell you last week? We had a service shop. The old like, building. The, 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 the egg story, the egg story, we went to go fetch it from the house. We put it under somebody's Yaris. I remember it was a Yaris. We drove to the house. Uh, uh, the boy sent us. He said, hey, let's, he actually told uh, Peter. He said, Peter, make sure that Waldo does not see, does not see what you guys are, are there for. Because he knew me. In a lot of things, he wouldn't want to involve me because I, I would always have a lot of questions. And the way I would look at him like, Brad, what's happening now? <laughs> So the egg story, we went to the house. I was driving. It literally took me less than five minutes to get to his house. I was speeding. In a 60 zone, I was doing, I think, 200. I had to rush to the house in his Porsche. 
I rush to the house. We get there. Because Peter is my friend. Let me tell you one thing people don't understand about Peter. Peter was in this cry with us. Before we all left, Peter and I, we used to talk. And Peter used to cry. And I was the guy that he was looking up to. And, you know, I would console him. We get to the house. Peter goes to the dustbin. The, the, the egg was wrapped in a, in, a, in, a, in a, what you call this, in a newspaper. He took it. And then I'm like, guy, what do you have? He's like, no, let, let's open and see. He's like, it's an egg. Hey, your father said we must come and fetch an egg. You know, I'm like, an egg is like, yes. I'm like, okay, Shab, let's leave now. We leave, shooting back to the church. We get there. Instruction came. Um, Peter, you need to put that egg by the car. There was a lady that was prophesied to that night. And she was driving a Yaris. I remember. I remember the cameraman was Martin that night. He had to go to the car because the, the, the prophecy came out like some, some witches are behind you. They put things everywhere you go. If you go to your car now and check under the this rear wheel, you'll find an egg. Oh, the lady went there. The cameraman uh, followed. And the next thing, boom. I knew. I knew. I knew. Uh, Peter knew. Peter and I knew what was happening. Oh, Obviously, Bayanda and Marshall, because they were the, the masterminds here. I'm sure Marshall and Bayanda came up with these things for him, because th those guys were just on another level. Like Solomon, at the rate that things are happening in those things that we regard as churches, like with my experience, I can have my own with this team here, because we know how everything is done. But because we love God so much, we are not saints, ne? but we love God so much, that until today, we highly believe in him. We, we, we were tested. Yeah. We were tested so many times. If we were weak, we would have lost it for God. But yeah. we regard him as, 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 as our man still, you know, as our father. But yeah, that's my experience with those people. And um, I'm actually glad I went through that because, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm just happy it happened now while I'm still a bit younger. Because it could have happened when I'm like 45 with my family now start taking everything from the house. You see, a person like Gray, Ashley f furnished that house from microwave to toaster to laptops to fridges to washing machines. This boy, this boy here, every time he came to the house, he would never come there empty-handed. That's why uh, the boy loved him. He loved him so much. It, it wasn't love. It was my fun. It was my finance. And every <laughs> every one of you guys here, I've shared your stories because I was driving the boy everywhere he went to, everywhere he would go. I was the driver of the car. So and the conversations. And I would tell Bongani, Bongani, dude, this is what said about you. This is what said about Ashley because Bongani and I were brothers until today. Um, um, um I love this man. Like we. We became brothers. That's one thing that came out of that place. I talked to Kibotilo on a daily almost, to George, to Anza. I talked to all these people ever since I left. And they will all tell you that I, I told them before we all left that something mm -hmm. is not right. We need to be careful. Uh, George is here. Anza is here. Gray is here. They'll tell you, Solomon. I saw it. And when I saw it, I, I started hinting to the boys because, you know, it's not easy to tell them because... Hey, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Great. Um, a lot of people want to buy a washing machine for them. So we'll see about that. Uh, Anza, welcome. Your mic is muted. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let me give you a minute to say something because this is like a two hours, 30 minutes now. Time has gone. Oh, okay. Um, let me share um, a bit of experience that I had. Uh, a lot of people were asking um, about the wife, if whether she's involved or she's clueless of what's happening. But um, the truth of the matter is she's, um, she's, she's aware of everything that is happening and, she, and she's fully involved in everything that is, that is happening in there. They taught her well in you know, practicing whatever they're practicing. I'm saying this um, because of something that I encountered with her uh, last year. 
Okay, um, I got uh, married last year, and um, in my process, you know, of uh, preparing for uh, my lobola uh, ceremony at the time, you know, I was communicating with Miss, and she, he, he knew everything that was happening. You know, he knew how much um, the family of my wife uh, proposed the amount that I was supposed to pay for my lobola. So. What happened is uh, they knew that, you know, I was working on something that I had money that I had saved, right? So this one time, um, the wife calls me and then she said, you know what, we, we have to meet. And then we met by, by, by checkers. We're in, in her car in the Range Rover at the time. Um, uh, so what happened is when I got there, you know, she said, uh, ish. Yeah, things are not looking good for you. Um, I was wondering what is happening. Then she said that um, things are not looking good for you and and your father. Your father is very angry at you. And I really feel sorry for you because you you need this grace. You can't afford to have your father mad at you at this time. Uh, you really need this grace because this grace has saved you from a lot of things and all that and has protected you, blah, blah, blah. And with that being said, you know, she she wanted me to go and apologize to Miss for something that I don't know. I don't know what I did. They just told she just, she just told me that uh, Miss is angry at me and Miss is planning to cut me off. And at that time, I don't know if most of you remember, Miss posted something on Instagram. There's a poster that he posted that he's looking for um, a new person to work for him in media, uh, do his graphics, photography, and all this. So he posted that yeah. on his Instagram. And then she yeah. referred to that, said, you know, see what your dad posted. So he wants to replace you. So I want to save you from you know, what's going to happen. I want you to go and apologize to me. Then I can, okay, it's fine. I'll go and apologize, you know, just to free, to iron uh, things out if maybe there's something wrong that I did. And then this lady asked me, so how much do you have with you? She, already I saw where the conversation was going. And then I say, no, ish, at this point in time, because, you know, I'm preparing for uh, this thing. And then I told him, no, hey, for now, I can at, at least uh, uh, nothing much. And maybe 2,000, 3,000, that's what I have for now. And then she said, no, I need you to do something big because that that's uh, too small for you to go and apologize uh, for your father. And then she asked me, how much have you saved for the money for your low ball? Which is something that was very shocking. Already I knew you know, where the conversation was going at the time. And then I lied to her. You know, I told her, okay, I only have uh, 25,000 at this point in time. And then it's with, it's with my mom. And then she told me, you know what? Uh, I don't know how soon you can get that money. I need you to uh, just call your mom, you know, to, get that, to send back that money to you. I want you to go and apologize to your father, you know. And then yeah. in a later stage, when you, when you need uh, that money, I'll give, I'll give it back to you uh, from my own pocket. That's what she said. You know, that's, that convinced me, you know, uh, for some reason I believed that. And then she was persuading me, you know. I didn't really like the idea and of, you know, calling my mom and saying, no, I need that money back. I need to go and apologize to my pastor. So I need that 25000 back understand so okay by that time i didn't give my mom twenty five thousand. i gave i had given him uh, more than that so i had to organize you know uh the twenty five thousand rent and then i went to to miss on a sunday and then she took me to the office so that i can go and apologize and then i went there i was apologizing not knowing what is it that i was apologizing for and then I gave that money, the 25,000 rand. You know, it's something that really broke me and my wife more especially because he, it was a time where maybe we needed support. Okay, not that we needed money from them, but we needed to be, you know, for them to support us as uh, our spiritual parents. But instead, uh, instead of helping, they took from us, you understand? And it didn't end there. After that, Miss comes to me uh, after on a Tuesday after a midweek service, and then he says to me, um, 
you know what, your wife needs grace for her to be able to, to, to stay in marriage. Uh, she needs mom's grace. So I need you to make sure that she's deeply connected to mom's grace. And I want you to do something big. Uh, when <laughs> he was saying something big, he was referring to money, of course. Money, hey, money. To... The mind yeah. games, the, the, yo, the mind fucking is real in that house. Yeah. That's and, you know, and then he was just saying a lot of things, you know, just to manipulate me and play with my mind, saying, you know, I saw this thing, this, this thing happening. So for you to be able to prevent that, uh, you need to make sure that your wife is deeply connected to mom's grace and she can have mom's phone numbers and all of that nonsense, you understand? And... The, same, the same mom that doesn't know her geography with the South African and Nigerian border, right? And Nigerian <laughs> border, yeah. yo. Jo exactly. Simple joke. Yeah, and, you know, I had to organize, uh, I had to give my wife like 10,000 rents and then... Hmm. We went to the house. I had 4,000 friends with me. You know, he said, now for me, you can just do something small, but you know, for your wife, you must do something big. Again. And then, yes. <laughs> so I had 4,000 friends with me. Uh, and then yeah, I yeah. gave my wife 10,000 friends. <laughs> we went there to the house. Buddha was <laughs> there. On that day, Buddha was there. We met at the gates. Buddha was there. Uh, Peter was there. Gudani was there. Then they gave us space because we had waited for, uh, we had waited outside for like 30 minutes and then they allowed us to come in. Then we met um, inside the, the next to the swimming pool. So we're sitting there outside and then my wife presented that seed. Then I also gave that 4,000 seeds. So, you know, so before much, in that time when I was preparing that's to, that's thirty nine thousand. That's yes. thirty nine thousand. Thirty nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. In total. Calculated. Mm. Mm. So on top of that, you know, while I was still working on you know preparing for my ceremony, because he needs money uh, to buy food, you know, to get a cow and all of that to get clothes, I also you know they suck me. That money, you know, in the time where I needed money the most. So that's mm. that's how evil they are. At one time, you know, when you're talking about dogs, I remembered one story at one time, but this was a long time ago. I remember I was really, really broke, you know. Means ordered me to go and buy food for his for his dogs, right? I had like um, a thousand bucks. That's what this was uh, the only money that I had at the time ordered me to go and buy food for his for his dogs. And I didn't have food in my own house. The thing, you know, it was really, uh, really painful. You know, I remember I, I bought minced meat for his dogs for like 900 rand. And yeah. then I took 100 rand and bought viennas for myself. I was eating pap <laughs> with viennas. While, you no, know, his dogs were eating my minced meat. I bought minced meat for 800 for his dogs while I was eating pap with uh, viennas. Let me tell you one That's thing out. on that. Let me tell. Mm -hmm. Let me add to that. He used to buy goulash like meat for for the dogs and keep it in the fridge. Peter and Gudanu would steal the meat and bring it to my place so I could cook for them because mm -hmm. they couldn't cook at the house. They they brought meat. So where's Bongani is off? Bongani was there. He knows. I cooked at my place. They would bring the meat and say, "Hey, my brother, please cook for us." There, you know, it's tough at the house. We can't cook. And your father is not, yeah. they always blame it on the mother and say, you know, exactly. your mother, how strict she is with the food. But I'll tell you, yeah, that, that woman, I don't know how she grew up or where she's from. Well, I know where she comes from, but uh, there's just something wrong with her. You know, yeah. there's something wrong yeah. with her. I've traveled well, so many would... times with them. Um, they won't even, you, do you know, do you know that Chucks, that boy never, he never even gave me 50 bucks for everything that I ever did for him. Yes. Never. Yeah. Understanding Remember, our we, struggles we and be, everything. We used to be on our feet the whole day from church. Let's say on Sunday. Church, the whole... uh, on Sunday, We are at church from <laughs> 7 o'clock or even earlier. No, sometimes and the previous five. night, The previous night, we were still at his house. And then we go home just to <laughs> catch a nap and, and wake up and go to church. After church, we go back to our places or our little rooms, wherever we rented, 
just to go and mm. and and change and go back to his house. Mm. When we get to his to house, house, yeah, we, we whatever we do garden or we do, and mind you we're on our feet the whole day. We'll do garden mm. or we'll wash cars or we'll wash the dogs and whatever it is mm-hmm. that he wanted us to do. Mm-hmm. And after that, mind you, you have not eaten a single thing. Then the wife will come with cookies that she asked somebody to bake. Imagine you are hungry and somebody gives you baked cookies <laughs> and you eat two cookies Not either just with cookies, water. Two cookies. Two cookies. <laughs> and if we were lucky, we would get a, a grated paloni with, with, with the rolls. I remember Waldo, you hated yeah. it. And and that's yeah, I hated I mean, that the too. dogs, the dogs would eat better food than us human beings who were there. And I felt sorry for for the for the boys who were there, the the likes of Peter and and most Buddha, Buddha, I mean, you know, he went through hell. That boy. That, that's, that's how Peter. bad it was. We need to get that Peter out of there. We need to get that. Peter you know, will not Peter, come. Peter, I know you are watching. Come out, boy. He'll it's about come. time. You will not come. Peter is your he doesn't, have, he, does, he doesn't have a backbone. I wish I had Peter. his mother's number and just call her straight and tell her. Listen, you need to take cops to. Oh, that address what? and take your son out of there because he yeah. had dropped out of school to serve. Bongandi and I had to talk sense yeah. into Peter so he could go and re register <laughs> and go back to class. And mm. he lives from the house to the campus, is about three kilometers. The boy would walk. Do you understand? He wakes up in the mm. morning, he, cle- he does whatever he needs to do. They send him around, and then now he must walk to campus <clears throat> wearing boots. Mm. He only had one pair of shoes. Yeah, we need to. We yeah, need but to, you didn't treat people need, like yeah. human beings. But guys, thank you so much. Anza mentioned something important, uh, which is the the wife charisma is also a co- collaborator in this yeah. whole thing. I always tell people: if you look at Bushiri, you think Bushiri is this and all that. His wife is not aware. She is aware of everything. Oh, Let's yeah. start from she is aware. Woman naturally, they know. They are collaborators. She goes behind a woman who he has raped, who wants to open cases. She goes and tries to threaten them and do all those kind of stuff. So most of these charlatans, baby charlatans, brother charlatan, father charlatans, they, all these thieves, their wives know. So let's not say they're innocent or whatever. Even if they're not, if, even if they, 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 you would think, wow, they got lured into it, but they've become a part of it and they're accepting it, you know? And they and they are right there. What's the right thing to do if you are a follower of Jesus? What's the right thing to do? What's, what's the point giving 25,000, 10,000 for grace? What grace? Nonsense. The Bible says his grace is sufficient for you. His grace. Yeah. Not some thief called his grace. No, not some charisma who, anyway, I don't even want to, to, to I'm not the kind of guy that call people names. You know, if you've noticed, I don't call people stupid or foolish. I'm tempted to do that, but I, I don't do that because I, I never want to do that. But their behavior in itself, yes, I can say they are be, their behavior in itself. And you can clearly see, listening to all of you guys, you could clearly see that Miz and Charisma, they are not smart at all. Mm. They're not smart at all. They're not. They're not smart at mm-hmm. all. I mean, listening to you guys, it's like, okay, how did you guys actually get in? Did he use some juju or some muti on you? Yeah. You know? Manipulation. At all. And yeah. you took your wife and you gave her away because you took the lobola money and gave it to them. You took your wife, gave her away. If I was that woman, I would take you to wait for two years, even if you have the money before you get married to me again. That's your punishment. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, but 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 it's it's you know all they do is to play with your mind, you know mm. to go. They they they're not big time witch witchcraft guys. They don't have that witchcraft, you know, authority like other charlatans. But they play with your mind. Yeah. You will be right there. They will play yes. with your mind right there. Yeah. And somehow you knew, yeah. but then you you're just there. <laughs> You know, yeah, but the yeah. lesson that we've got, guys, to be honest with you, is just a whole lot of people. You will not believe the kind of support. I advise you to go check out uh, some of the comments that people left from what you were saying. There's a whole conversation. There's there's about two thousand seven hundred and 
whatever people watching, you know, and because people are interested and this is your story. And I love the fact that you're able to tell your story to, to people, uh, you know, and people are having conversations. You know, some ladies, I think I'm going to plug them. They're just after Gray. They, they want to marry him. They want to do whatever, you know. Uh, they, leave, leave the guy to repent first, please. The guy is, is trying to repent, right? He's trying to get back to God. So give him some space. Let him readjust. You know, but I really want to thank you guys for 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 just for just being there. We're gonna have the last uh, chapter, chapter three, part three of this whole conversation next week, Thursday at eight. Uh, we're gonna bring some of the victims and maybe one or two of you guys also to join us, just so we can bring a close to it. I know they are monitoring, Miss. I know you're gonna watch this. This is me, Solomon. You are a thief. It's as simple as that. I call you a thief. Because you know you are a thief, you're a charlatan, you're a fraud. Change your ways before it's too late. That's who you are. That's who you are. So, so I really want to thank you, every one of you guys. There's there are videos that I, I mean, earlier on, I, like I said, I did a video with uh, Missy uh, Side Chick. She said quite a lot. You can go check it out uh, on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And finally, let's give the lady of the house the last word to say before we shut down. Okay. Uh Mr. Solomon, we just wanted to share um, that um, what we picked up from all the victims that spoke to us, uh, the sexual ones, yes. uh, how, how Ms. Um, lures you in is that he, he welcomes you as a daughter, makes you feel like you need the grace and uh, God has connected you to him and you are so blessed. And you saw a power couple on Instagram or on Facebook, and you're like, oh, oh, my God, I'm already recognized. And then after that, mm -hmm. he's going to prophesy unto you. Obviously, he goes for beautiful girls. All the victims are so beautiful. He's going to say that, uh, I see you are so beautiful. You're a young lady who men uh, are playing with. And obviously, that's every beautiful girl's problem. Um, and then you're going to confirm that, yes, I've been struggling with relationship. And then he's like, okay, uh, it's going to end now that you are connected to my grace. And then he's going to say that I'm going to connect you to my wife. Then he maybe he's going to call you with the wife, either video call or something. But he's going to involve the wife at first. And then he's going to say, meet your mom, blah, blah, blah. And then jiggy, jiggy, please do visit the church uh, when you can. And then after that, he's going to eliminate um, the wife or eliminate her. Then after that, he's going to bring in the guys, Abu Gudani, and I don't know if Bayanda is also involved in that. Then after that, it's going to be uh, how, uh, when can you come to the church? And if you say, I don't have money to come, He's going to say, no, my guys will send you money. The guys will send you money. And then they will be the one picking you up from wherever the bus station or wherever, or the Mexi taxis or the Ubers or whatever. And he's going to ask a girl from inside the church to come in with you to, to, uh, to camouflage the whole, the whole scene that we, the congregant, will not see that there's a new girl that he actually brought in. Yeah. Then, uh, after, yeah, then after that, he's going to tell you that uh, maybe your situation doesn't need to be addressed in the church. He respects you and doesn't want to embarrass you or speak about your problems inside the church. So you guys are going to meet up at a and b or a hotel. Then after that, he's going to Uber you or... Kudani will do the job of transporting you to wherever the BNB or or the hotel. And when when you get there, he's gonna tell you that he's gonna come talk to you, just like the other victim. Or he's gonna talk for married people, he'll say he's gonna talk about how you can fix your marriage. And that's how you'll be in. So with 
if you have a friend that tells you that Papa wants to see me or something, please do go with your friends because when you're inside this, he's, he's, he's already done with your mind. You feel blessed. You feel like my story is going to change. Nothing is going to change. The only thing that's going to change is... Uh, yeah. So, mm. like, mm. The, these are the traits that we have seen in all the victims. And after he sleeps with you, he's going to uh, talk you into making a voice note or into making a video. A video so yeah, that... Yeah. The day you want to come out, he's going to play that video to the wife. Or maybe if it goes to court, he's going to play that in court. That's yeah, why that's, most that's victims... Awesome. Yeah, that's why most victims don't want to come out because they, they, were, they were manipulated into making that video or that voice mm -hmm. note. Yeah, or he that's... plays it in the church and says that this person left because she wanted me or she yeah. she was lusting over me it's not the the case he is yeah. good with manipulation he is good yeah. with manipulation so yeah, that, just just to 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 send an awareness that's how he operates obviously he's going to change how he does things but at least somebody can can see the traits that's it that's right and he uses that's money as well he offers money oh and money yeah he he gives yeah. money Money. That's what that's people then, you know, with Shiri, that's how they operate. They make videos, they get you to do yeah, something. And, to and when when Bushiri came to our church, his guys, the guys around him were already after us. They're already after the girls in the church. When yeah. Ubid Angel came came to our church, the protocol, the guys that stand in front like this, you thinking they're protocoling, no, they are actually scouting. I remember yeah. there's a guy who was talking to me, was talking to Masana, was talking to some girl at the same time. And I was like, Masana, this guy is proposing me. And then she's like, me too. And she, he's married. And we're like, what the hell? So they yeah. actually, it's a brothel. It's a brothel. It, it is. It's, like, it's, it's disgusting that we yeah. think we're going to church, but they 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 using us. Yes, mm. that's what they do, and that's what that's why we have to do whatever it takes to shut down that place. You know what? Yeah, and it, for those mm. exact for those people that are saying that we must keep quiet, we're sorry that our truth is making you uncomfortable, but no, we, we cannot. Don't. It's our stories. It's my truth. It's my testimony. the The Bible says we have yep. defeated the enemy by the words of our testimonies. And mm. you Christians, why do you want to sweep Amen. things under the carpet? The body of Christ is dirty. It's disgusting. And you want us to keep quiet. No, you go sort out your things. If you feel like silence is okay, it's not okay. It doesn't solve anything. Enough yeah, it, is enough. Yeah. Enough. We Look, don't unfortunately want... for some of us, we need to speak out to, to have peace within us. Guys, I it's need not to say it. It's, it's not, not anger. It's not no. bitterness. It's no, not. It's not. Then, then the whole Bible should, should not be used because the whole Bible is stories. Guys, it's not unfortunate. Yeah. You don't owe anybody an apology. I've exactly. been doing Exactly. I've been doing this for 10 years. My life has been threatened. My family life, I had to move house. There's a time I had to move my wife out of our house and take her to her sisters. You know, my life has been threatened. I've been taken to court so many times. But that's not going to shut me from saying the truth. Even if it's going to cost me my life. There's something I'm about prepared. Yeah. Something I'm prepared for. And people don't understand. Yeah. I've gotten so many calls and people telling me... I'm not going to stop. So. Die for it. And a lot of the people there are not ready to die for it. That's why they're telling you to keep quiet. It's none of your business. I will buy you just leave it. No. They and are you also touched me. The ones that Where are Where were you when I was touched? Collaborators. At least you've seen the light and you've come out and you're sharing all this, which is what I want to applaud every one of you guys. And I believe that every one of you guys is not going to go back to that, but he's going to use that experience. Yeah. Oh, Help yeah. other is going to use that experience to enrich your life. He's going to use that experience yeah. for people to see light because you yeah. have a responsibility now. 
you were collaborators. Somehow we didn't know, but you got into it. You have a responsibility. Yeah. So you need to keep sharing this food over and over again. We're not afraid of anybody. You need to see that New Life Church shut down. It's a shrine. It's a hotel. It you is. See, we need to empty the place by sharing the truth. That's what it is. It's probably going to run yeah. home. And just, home uh, you know, but it's not. I just uh, was, was talking about uh, the coming of Bushiri to the Val. His, his coming to the Val was not about winning souls. It was about mm -hmm. raising funds or for yeah. to get a big That was the main purpose of him to come to the Val. I remember when yeah. I was protocoling. Bushiri, Bushiri, and, doesn't, uh, save, Bushiri doesn't save souls. She's not, she's a they don't say so. Unfortunately, unfortunately, a whole lot of people thought that was the main aim for Bushiru to come there, but then it wasn't. I remember it was a late service. Uh, when it was late, Bushiru made a, a declaration about people having to sow see, uh, a seed in order for them to, to get to the next level in life. So what happened was uh, these guys were sowing seeds. He gave them an instruction to, to put the seed on the floor. Then when he did that, remember my job is to protocol uh, me, right? So while last I was doing that, uh, me whispers to me is like, uh, leave me, uh, go and take care of the money, check that nobody steals the money. So the main thing of the of, of that event was to raise funds for me to get a bigger building. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Exactly. That's what they do to each other because they are covenant brothers. So they support each other that way. That's why they go to each other. Guys, oh, again, I, it was a bribe. It was a bribe just to shut him down for something that happened that everybody's still out there questioning, you know, when exactly. the guy so, traveled. So. Yeah, you have to go we and know ask. Those, we're, not, yeah. we're, we're not stupid, we know. You have to go and ask, Miss, he has a baby with charisma. I see down a DNA test. You, need, you know, people would need to go and ask that. Because that happens. That's how they roll. You but don't know. You cannot trust. You don't know these guys. You don't. <laughs> you don't know the criminal minds of those. Forget about pulpit. What pulpit? Forget about prophet. What prophet? Rubbish. Rubbish. Hi. We're not saying the church of God is not the hope of our community. The Church of God is the hope of our community, but we need to do things right. Unfortunately, a lot of us do not do things right. Not just the pastors or the prophets, even the people that sit in the congregation. You are also yeah. the takers of the sin that they do. You cover exactly. them. Don't expose exactly. them. Exactly. You are also partakers of Exactly. Them. So don't yeah. go around. Yes. If, if all of us could open our mouths to when we see all these things and talk about it, then the church is going to at least have some sort of some sense of holiness. But there is no righteousness out of the window. Yes. Hypocrisy is the order of the day. Lawlessness. Jesus brutes of vipers. It's a business, so man. Please, if you I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. Church, just shut up. Just shut up. Just allow us to do that. No. What means we're coming yeah. after you. We're not done with you yet. That your shrine, that your brutal need to be closed. But guys, yeah. thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Uh, we can go on and on. It's three hours. Can you believe it? It's three hours. You know. Yeah, but thank you so much. We could go on the whole night, man. So much. Yes. People are still here. So There's much. about 2,200 people still there. But go in the strength of the Lord. You know, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he continue to be your strength. As you navigate Amen. this difficult path that you're doing. But I'm sure you're going to turn your face to God. And he's going to turn your face, his, his face to you. Amen. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone who's watching right thank now. You so thank you for staying with us. Thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Continue to pray for these guys. Continue to pray for everyone. Continue to to just believe that you know the church needs to be a better place. That we've made mistakes in the church. We're making mistakes, but we can do far better. Just like Jesus, we can do far better. But before you join us next week Thursday, the concluding part, um, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There are other videos there. I check it out. And please, let's be bearers of truth. There's no way we can go around uh, keep spreading things that are not truth. 
let's let be people that would really represent if you say you are a christian please let your character your action shows it not the just fruit. let's see the mind. fruit the fruit we need of to see the spirit fruit. we need to see the fruit of the spirit we need to see faithfulness we need to see the long suffering we need we need to see every fruit of the spirit it, time for talk is over time for talk Amen. is over thank you guys god bless you have a wonderful night thank you thank you man thank you